Death Speaks Another Language. We present a radio thriller in six episodes by Peter Ling, with Derek Seaton, David Baller, and Hilda Kreisman. Death Speaks Another Language. Episode one, Felix Bonton Must Die. Don't mind, people. What? A cigarette. I haven't got any. You know I don't smoke. Give me one of my cigarettes, eh, in the pocket of my shirt. What did you say? Oh, turn off the radio, eh? Don't snap at me. I'm sorry. The cigarettes are in my shirt pocket. And where is your shirt? You are lying on it. Oh. Oh, it's hot today. Yes. Almost like Le Midi. Mm, the weather in England is not often so warm, but when it is, yeah, catch. Thanks. In Sweden, too, we have wonderful summers. You should go to Sweden one day. You will like it. <laughs> you think I will ever get to Sweden? How shall I ever get anywhere without a passport? You are smoking too much at your age. Oh, je t'en prie. C'est une question de vie et de mort. Et toi? In English. You understand French perfectly? Yes, but I'm in England to perfect my English. Well, I'm up against the most terrifying situation of my life, and you are concerned about perfecting your English. I'm sorry. I suppose it's hard for you to understand lying here on the beach sunbathing. Perhaps it all seems uh, just a game to you. Nico, don't be angry. I want to help you. Mm, how can anyone help? I don't know. If only you had ah, never... Yes, of course, it's all my own fault. If only, if only. But it's too late to say that. I've put myself into their hands. Perhaps if you told the police everything. Oh, are you mad? The police are looking for me at this moment. In France, yes. Everywhere. In... I've broken the laws of England as well. If I go to the police, it will mean prison. But if you stay here, they will go on blackmailing you. That is why I have decided I must go. He will never let you go. He will not know anything about it. There is only one way out. What do you mean? Felix Bonton must die. What? It will look like an accident. It will not be difficult to arrange. Now look at them all down there, splashing about in the sea. No one will ever know, except you and me. No, Nico, there must be some other way. I tell you, there is not. I've thought and thought. This is the only way I can be safe. But I shall need your help. Karen, you will help me. Tell me what I have to do. Neil! Neil, did you hear me? Sorry, Mum. You say something. Do we have to have the gramophone on at full blast? Don't say gramophone, Mum. It sounds practically archaic. It's a record player. Well, whatever it is, it's making all the ornaments jump up and down on the mantelpiece. Why does everybody under the age of 21 have to live with a non-stop musical accompaniment? It's only background music. Well, I wouldn't mind if it stayed in the background. You're not even dressed yet. I couldn't find my yellow sweater. It's in your wardrobe if you'd only look. Anyway, you'd better put on a collar and tie. You know what Aunt Maud's like. Look, Mum, And don't I want... say you haven't got a clean shirt. I ironed one last night. It's in the airing no, cupboard. No, listen, would you mind terribly if I didn't come up to London? Why ever not? Well, I'm a bit tired, actually. Well, it's only two hours in the well, car. I don't really feel up to it. Oh, don't tell me you're sickening for something. No, but... Well, look, you see, I've been working very hard all last term, and you said this vac was going to be a nice, quiet holiday for me. That's why I chucked the idea of going touring in Spain. As far as I remember, you chucked the Spanish trip when you found out that Caroline Thing was going with her fiancé. Yeah, well, that was only part of the reason. Before I go back to college, I want to complete Well, rest. I'm all in favour of that. But I wouldn't have thought a day's drive up to London to have tea with your great aunt would be too much of an emotional strain. Yeah, I know, but I you don't... You don't want to go. Well, that's right. Well, have you made any other plans for the day? Well, not plans, exactly. I half arranged to meet somebody. I knew you wouldn't mind. I mind very much. But what's that got to do with it? You know I loathe driving by myself. You're a very good driver. Thank you, dear. As long as you remember not to keep the choke out all the way to London. I'm not worried about the driving. I just hate being on my own. 
I'm always terrified I shall nod off on the motorway. Hey, perhaps you could pick up a hitchhiker. I beg your pardon. Well, you look very dolly in that linen suit. You never know your luck. Oh, don't be silly, dear. You often see people thumbing lifts on the outskirts of town. Be doing somebody a kindness. There'll be company for you. Mm. I've read some very worrying stories in the newspapers about giving lifts to strangers. <laughs> Go on, live dangerously. Hey, you might come across some hot-blooded foreign student with a thing about older ladies. I'm not listening. Well, I mean, there's loads of these foreign kids around the town. They've got some kind of language school over on the East Cliff. Neil, before you let your imagination run riot, I probably shan't see anyone at all on the way to London. But if I do, and if I happen to give them a lift out of the kindness of my heart, and if there's any kind of unpleasantness, I shall hold you entirely responsible. Miss Hathaway. Yes, Mr Plessy. There was one more letter which I'd like you to answer, if you have time. Of course, Mr Plessy. I'll bring my notebook over. It's the reply to an inquiry from Bordeaux. Uh, would you like me to send the usual brochure? No, I'm afraid this needs a personal letter. They don't seem to realise that this is a summer school only. They're talking about six months' courses through the winter. Oh, it's rather a pity we couldn't keep the school open all the year round, isn't it? We're getting more applications than we can deal with. Miss Hathaway, when I retired from the headmastership at Waldenhurst, I promised myself a rest. Running this place from June to September is quite enough of a strain without the... Now, who can that be? I can't see anyone until we clear of all these letters. I'll tell them. I want Mr. Plessy. But I'm afraid he's very busy just now. This is terribly what? important. Look here. You can't come barging Mr. in. Mr. Plessy, I must see you. All right, Miss Hathaway. It is Miss... Um... Uh, Engstrom. Ah, uh, Miss Engstrom, of course. You're in the intermediate class, aren't you? Yes, but it's not... Perhaps you didn't realise, but I have to make it a rule that I can never see anyone without an appointment. With 50 students here, I... Oh, you don't understand. There's been an accident. What? It's Felix Bonton. He's dead. Oh, no. Dead? Bonton? I don't believe it. It's true. I was there. I saw it happen. You better sit down. Uh, Miss Hathaway, get her a glass of water. Yes, of course. I'll be as quick as I can. Now, please try to control yourself and tell me exactly what happened. We were on the beach, about ten of us, all from the intermediate class. Yes, yes, go on. Everyone was swimming. The, the tide was going out. You told us before that it was dangerous. There is a very strong undertow at low tide. I know, but we forgot. We were all laughing, playing about. It was horrible. Here you are, dear. Now, drink this. See this boy, Bonto. He got out of his depth. There was a rowing boat in the bay, a fishing boat. Somebody dared him to swim out to it. Who? I did. I said it. It's all my fault. Oh, no, you couldn't have known. It was a sort of challenge. He dived in, and, and when he was halfway to the boat, he went under. We saw him waving his arms, and then he just disappeared. But didn't anyone go to his rescue? We all did. Kurt Mannheim's a very strong swimmer, but there was no sign of Felix. We searched as long as we could. Oh, poor boy. He must have been swept out to sea. Yes. It's no good hoping any longer. He's drowned. Oh, woman driver, of all the... Well, he's thumbing a lift. Well, why not? It'll be something to tell Neil. He doesn't look dangerous. He's only a boy, after all. Did you want to lift? Uh, please, uh, are you going to London? Yes, I am. Get in. Oh, it's very kind of you. Oh, whereabouts in London do you go? I'm going to Regent's Park. Is that any use to you? Uh, is it near to Earl's Court? No, not really. Oh, well, uh, anywhere in London will do. It doesn't matter. Uh, at um, what time do you think you will arrive in London? Well, it depends on the traffic. About two hours, more or less. Oh, I see. You're in a hurry, are you? To meet someone? Uh, perhaps, yes. I suppose you spent the morning on the beach and forgot the time. Why do you say this? What? Uh, the beach. How do you know I went to the beach? Oh, it wasn't very difficult. Your hair's still wet. Ah, yes. Uh, I was uh, swimming with some friends. It was a lovely day for a swim. But I expect the water was cold, wasn't it? I don't know. I don't remember. Oh, you're shivering. Your hands are... Something is wrong? Oh, I'm sorry, it's none of my business. My son always tells me I'm too inquisitive. Yes? Uh, go on, please. Well, I just noticed 
Your shirt is soaked. You must be wet through. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I make the car damp. Well, I wasn't thinking about the car, but you'll catch your death of cold. No. <laughs> I will not die. <laughs> Do not worry. Didn't you have a towel? I uh, lost my towel, and uh, as you said, I was in a hurry, and uh, I just pulled on my clothes and ran. Uh, boys are all the same. Take your jacket off and your shirt will dry quicker in the sun. Oh, no, it's Well, right. I'm not going to let you catch pneumonia. Go on, you can dump it in the back seat. All right, uh, thank you. I know, I'm being a terrible fusspot, but I can't help it. A terrible what? A fusspot. Worrier. Ah. I'm sorry, I was forgetting. You're French, aren't you? Yes, I'm studying English at the Summer School on the East Cliff. Why are you smiling? Did I say it wrong? <laughs> no, not at all. I was just remembering something Neil said to me, my son. Ah. How long have you been in England? Uh, only a few weeks. Do you like it here? Oh, it's all right. <laughs> you don't sound very enthusiastic. What part of France do you come from? The Midi. South Coast. Oh, I once had a wonderful holiday in Provence. Is your home anywhere near Avignon? No. Uh, it's not very near, no. Oh, I'm being inquisitive. I'm sorry. Oh, Lord. What? The car's starting to make those funny noises again. It was making that noise the other day, and, and then it seemed to put itself right, so I didn't do anything about it. At least it's still going, eh? Yes, but I think I'd better call in at the next garage and get a man to look at it. Oh, no. I beg your pardon? As long as the car's still able to drive, it will take a long time to stop at the garage. Oh, of course, if you're in a hurry. But this time it seems to be getting worse. I'm afraid I'll have to call in at the next garage. I'm so sorry. Very well. If it's anything serious, you could get a lift from someone else. Yes. Oh, good. There's a petrol station. Let's hope they've got an engineer on duty. Yes, of course. Uh, my name is Plessy. Andrew Plessy. P-L-E-S-S-E-Y. That's right, Inspector. Yes, I shall be here to give you any information I can. But I'm afraid I don't know very much about the boy. We have his papers, of course. I imagine we want to notify the next of kin. Yes, it is indeed. Very upsetting. We've never had any trouble at the school before. Thank you. Yes, I shall be waiting for you in my office. Goodbye, Inspector. Oh, come in, Miss Hathaway. How is she? I persuaded her to lie down. I gave her a cup of tea. She's still rather hysterical, I'm afraid. Mm. Did you tell him any more? More? Details. How it happened. No. I didn't encourage her to talk. Oh, I'm afraid she's going to have to talk. I just telephoned the police station. They're sending a man right away. Oh, dear. It's all so unfortunate. It is one way of describing it. But the police will have to deal with it, of course. I suppose so. It will be unsettling for the other students. I can't help that. Don't imagine I want the police standing in and asking a lot of idiotic questions, do you? No. No, of course not, Mr. Plessy. Why, oh, I beg your pardon, Miss Hathaway. You must forgive me. It's been rather a shock. Quite. If I may say so, I always felt there was something odd about that boy. What? Felix Bontar. I never had much to do with him, but he always seemed out of things, rather. He, he didn't mix with the others. Almost as if he had a premonition. Uh, yes, thank you, Miss Hathaway. Uh, perhaps you'd be good enough to send Mr. Dutton in to me when he's free. This situation needs very careful handling. Yes, Mr. Plessy, I do agree. It's all so... so... Unfortunate? Yes, indeed. Very unfortunate. Excuse me. Hi. I'm sorry to bother you, but the young lady at the petrol pump said you might be able to have a look at my car. I'm opening my eyes, lady. After this is that big end, see? I've got a bashed up radiator to take out. A set of brakes weren't relining. I know you're busy, but if you could just listen to my engine, it's making funny hiccuping noises. I don't know, I'm sure. I'm on my way to London and my passenger's in a hurry as well. Couldn't you spare a minute just to listen? OK, I'll listen. I'm not saying I can do nothing, mine. It's out on the forecourt. There you are, the blue one over by... Oh. What's up? He's gone. Who? Oh. My passenger, I left him in the car. Oh, maybe he's nipped off for a wash and brush up. We got the faculties round the back. I don't know. 
No, he must have gone. He's taken his jacket with him. Could you open a bonnet up? Yes, of course. Now start her up. Don't rev it, just keep it ticking over. Oh, he's dropped a book. He must have fallen out of his pocket. Well, I'll tell you what your trouble is. Dirty plug. Oh, is that bad? We're only firing on two cylinders. Need a new set of plugs. OK, switch her off. Can you possibly...? Oh, don't you worry. We'll have you fixed up in two ticks. Thank you. Only he'd waited. But I suppose he was in a hurry and rushed off to find another lift. Eh? This French boy I picked up <laughs> gave a lift to. I'll have to try and return his book to him. Oh, French, was he? Well, they're a funny lot. Maybe he's got his name and address in it. No. No address, but he's written his name inside the cover. Bontom. Felix Bontom. Go on, say it. You could hear the record player all the way to the front gate. No, dear. I just saw the plaster rattling off the walls. Had a good day? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Tea? What a wonderful sight. It's House stone cold. I made it hours ago. Oh, well, I'll go and put the kettle on. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Poor old mum. I could have shared the driving. Yes. Although if you had been driving, I don't suppose I would ever have met my French gentleman. Your what? Yes, I thought that would surprise you. Your prediction came true. I gave a lift to a French student. What? Oh, he was charming. <laughs> You're kidding. I promise you. Well, actually, he was in a terrible hurry to get to London. So when the car started misbehaving and I had to go to the Look, garage... Wait a minute. Just... One thing at a time. You picked up a French student, but it was the car that misbehaved? That's right. He'd been swimming and he didn't have a towel, so he was soaked to the skin and the car had dirty plugs and it kept hiccuping. You're pulling my leg, aren't you? Oh, if you don't believe me, I've got proof. He left his book in the car. He's a student at that language school on the East Cliff. Look, here it is. Hmm? Oh, useful English phrases. <laughs> well, I suppose you... Hey, Mum. What's the matter, dear? Why are you looking at me like that? He's got his name in the book. Yes, I know. Felix Bonton. I must try and get in touch with him. Well, you won't be able to. I'm afraid this is going to come as a bit of a shock to you, Mum. He's dead. Neil. Well, it's true. I bought an evening paper. Where is it? Ah, oh, yeah. Look, um, yes, in the stop press. He was drowned this morning. A bathing accident. Show me. Oh, no, there's been a mistake. What do you mean? I saw him after he'd been swimming. It was nearly lunchtime. Well, you know what time I left here. What, you mean, they only thought he was drowned? But why did he scoot off like that? If he got ashore safely, why didn't he go back to his friends? I don't know. But I know he's alive. I'd better telephone the school. What an extraordinary thing. What a good job he forgot his book. Otherwise, we'd never have known. Come in. Miss Hathaway said you wanted to see me. I do. Shut the door, please. Come and sit down. I thought perhaps the policeman was still here. More questions. No, he's gone. He asked you a lot of questions, did he? Oh, yes. Then perhaps you would tell me what answers you gave. Please? I want to know exactly what you said to the inspector. I only told him what I told you, nothing else. Are you quite sure? Nothing else about Felix Bonton? No. Well, what could I tell? I know nothing about Felix. But you were his closest friend here, weren't you? The only one he talked to. He must have confided in he you. He didn't. Why are you asking me all this? Because it seems that the police are not at all satisfied with your answers. 
I have to go to the police station myself tomorrow morning and go over the whole unhappy business again. It is highly inconvenient. So, if you can throw any more light on the accident... I can't. I told the man everything I could. But are you sure you didn't forget any little details? <laughs> Think hard. Isn't there anything else you know which might help us? Oh, come in. Excuse me, Mr. Plessy. I told you I didn't want to be disturbed. Yes, but there's a man downstairs, a reporter. He's from the Echo. Well, I can't possibly see him now. He says he'll wait. Well, tell him to, well, tell him to come back tomorrow morning at 11. Well, but you've got to go to the police station at 11. Exactly. Then you can give him my apologies and say I've been called away. I don't think he'll be satisfied with that. Uh, you'll have to talk to him sooner or later. <sighs> yes, oh, all right. You'd better get it over, I suppose. Miss Engstrom... You wait here. I shan't be long. I left him waiting in the hall, Mr. Plessy. I only hope he doesn't start badgering the students. Oh, Nico. <gasps> Hello? Is that the language school? Yes. May I speak to the principal, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Plessy isn't here at the moment. Uh, perhaps you could call again later. It's very urgent. It's about Felix Bonton. What about him? There's been some mistake. He isn't dead. That's not true. Uh, who is this speaking? My name is Benson. I was driving to London at lunchtime today, and I gave the boy a lift in my car. He was wet through, he'd been swimming, and he seemed rather upset. But I assure you, he was alive and well. So, you see, I must speak to Mr. Plessy as soon as possible. I, I see. But I'm afraid Mr. Plessy is out. Oh, dear. Are you his secretary? Uh, yes, that's right. Well, perhaps you could tell him. Yes, of course I will tell him. The thing is, Mr. Bontom left a book in my car. I thought I'd better come over and return no, it. No, don't do that. What? Well, it's no trouble either to Mrs. Benson, or... I think perhaps the best thing would be for you to come over here tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. I'm sure Mr. Plessy will be able to see you then. Oh. Oh, very well. It seems there has been some mistake. If you come tomorrow morning, no doubt we can sort everything out. Oh, but I... I'm sorry, I must go now. We are very busy at present. Thank you for calling, Mrs. Benson. Good night. Yes, but just a moment. Miss Engstrom. Yes? I thought I heard you talking to somebody. The phone rang, so I answered it. Why didn't you come and find me? Who was it? Only another newspaper. I said you were very busy. I see. Thank you. May I go now? Not yet. We hadn't quite finished our little talk, had we? Sit down, please. Good morning, Mrs. Benson. Yes, um... We spoke on the telephone last night. I'm Mr. Plessy's secretary. How do you do? I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid Mr. Plessy has been called away this morning. He asked me to see you and apologize. Oh, dear. Do you have the book with you? Yes, it's here. That's how I knew his name. It's written inside. I see. I think now I understand. Well, I knew he couldn't be dead because I saw him at lunchtime. I'm and sorry. I... I'm afraid there is no doubt that Felix Bonton was drowned yesterday. Several of us on the beach saw the accident. But that's impossible. You know, students are always borrowing each other's books. Yes. I expect somebody took poor Felix's book by mistake. Uh, what did the boy look like, the one you saw? Well, he was slim and suntanned. He had dark, curly hair. And you gave him a lift to London? Yes. Of course, that would have been Nico. He is another student in the same class. He did go up to London yesterday. Oh. Well, that explains it. I'm sorry. I hoped somehow that... Can I help you? I'll take the book. Uh, if you're from another of those newspapers... Oh, no, I... I'm not. My name is Benson. I hope to see Mr. Plessy, but his secretary tells me he's not here. His what? Did that girl say she was his secretary? Well, yes, isn't she? She's a student. I am Mr. Plessy's secretary. Now, what exactly is all this about? But why should she say that well, you... she is a little bit overwrought. She was a friend of the boy who... who met with the accident. I see. Well, that's really why I'm here. 
You see, I thought at first there'd been a mistake. But yesterday I gave a lift in my car to one of your students and he left a book behind with a name in it, Felix Bonton. Yesterday? When? Well, that was the point. It was after the accident, so naturally I thought... But it seems that it was a different boy who'd taken the book by mistake. Nico, somebody. Nico? I think you had better come inside. I'm sorry if I've added to the confusion by coming over like this. Oh, you have certainly added to the confusion. We have no boy enrolled here by the name of Nico or, or Nicholas. Oh, but surely no. they... No, wait a minute. There should be some photos here. I've left them on the hall table. Yes, here we are. Uh, these are some snaps I took last week out in the garden. This boy you saw, uh, do you recognise him in any of the groups? No. Well, it's hard to be sure, but I don't... Uh, the light wasn't very good. There was a lot of cloud. Yes, that one. That's Nico. What time did you say you saw him yesterday morning? Oh, nearly lunchtime. Uh, Twelve, twelve thirty. Why, what's the matter? At eleven o'clock, that boy was drowned. That boy was Felix Bonton. <laughs> That was the first episode of Death Speaks Another Language by Peter Ling. Listen to the next episode of Ronald Mason's production of Death Speaks Another Language, wanted by the police. And tomorrow, hoping to make amends for his crime, Nico plans a dangerous liaison in London. Death Speaks Another Language. We present a radio thriller in six episodes by Peter Ling, with Derek Seaton, David Baller and Hilda Kreisman. Death Speaks Another Language. Episode 2, Wanted by the Police. So then she looked at me in a very peculiar way and she asked, what time did you say you saw him yesterday morning? And you told her? Of course. I said, oh, 12, 12.30 perhaps, nearly lunchtime. Well, I didn't see that it mattered, really. But then she put the photo down and said, at 11 o'clock, that boy was drowned. That was Felix Bonton. I don't get it. Look, the boy you saw... I gave him a lift in my car at half past 12. His name was Felix Bonton. And an hour beforehand, he was drowned in a bathing accident. Well, it doesn't make sense. Yes, dear, I know. This secretary woman, Miss Hathaway, she simply decided I must have made a mistake in the time. At least that's what she said. Quite honestly, I got the impression that she didn't want to talk about it. Oh, she thanked me very politely for going over there, but it was perfectly obvious she wanted to get rid of me. She took my address and said, no doubt Mr. Plessy would be in touch with me shortly. What about the first girl you met, the one who pretended to be the headmaster's secretary? Oh, she simply bolted. I never saw her again. After all, I had no reason to hang about. I just got back into the car and, well, here I am. Mm, she obviously knows a lot more than she's saying. Who? Miss Hathaway? Yeah, maybe, but I meant the girl. She's the one who really interests me. Oh, yes, you should have seen her. About 19. Swedish, I think. Very blonde, very pretty. You make me sound as if I never think about anything except girls. <laughs> Look, Mum, are you certain you haven't got everything muddled up? You know what you're like. You make me sound as if I never think at all. If you're suggesting that I imagine the entire thing... Oh, who can that be? Oh, it might be the laundry. They did say they were a bit chaotic at the moment with all the holiday visitors in town. I got the box packed yesterday. They didn't call yesterday. I was in nearly all day. Mrs Benson? Good gracious. I must speak to you. Oh, you'd better come inside. I I'm so sorry to trouble you like this, but, but I was desperate. Well, as a matter of fact, we were only just talking about you, Miss... Uh... Engstrom. Karen Engstrom. Ah, you are Swedish. Well, yes. There you are, Neil. I didn't imagine that anyway. 
please? Uh, won't you sit down, Miss Engstrom? Oh, thank you. I prefer to stand. I, I like to walk about. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my son, Neil. I'm happy to meet you. How do you do? I apologise for coming to you like this. I, I know it is not polite, but I, I, I do not know how to explain to you. There was nowhere else I could go. How did you know where to find me? After you left, Miss Hathaway came to me. She was very angry that I had told you a lie about being Mr. Plessy's secretary. Yes, how do you explain that? Shh. Go on, Karen. She said I was to wait in Mr. Plessy's study till he got back, so I had to wait. I saw his car drive up, and I saw her from the window meeting him at the front door. I heard what she told him, how you had been there. Oh, of course, and I left her my address. She told it to him, and I suddenly thought, Mrs. Benson, she will help me. I, I could not stay there. I could not face Mr. Plessy. So I said your address over and over to myself. I did not wait. I, I hurried through the back door and, and I ran. Well, you found us now. Why didn't you want to see this headmaster? What's his name? Plessy. He had questioned me already and I said I knew nothing. But now he would question me again and again until I broke down. Until I told him everything I know. About this boy, uh, Felix Bonton? About Nico. Uh, that is his real name. Nico, Felix, they are the same boy. Oh. So that's it. Why can't you tell Mr. Plessy the truth? I dare not. If I say one word, Nico's life will be in danger. I dare not tell anyone. But you can't come here begging for help and expect us not to ask any questions. We've got to have a little more to Neil, go on. Neil, Karen's terribly upset. She'll tell us what she can. Do you know where Nico is now? Not exactly. You mean you don't know or you won't tell us? He went to London. Yes. He asked me if I was going anywhere near Earl's Court. There is a coffee bar, a place they call a discotheque. That's where he was going. Another cappuccino? What? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you say something? You want another coffee, sport? Sitting over that one long enough must be stone cold. Uh, no, thank you. I'm just going. I'm not trying to rush you. You were uh, in here last night too, weren't you? Yes. Are you the manager? Oh, <laughs> what, me manage this place? Look, matey, I can't manage anything. Not right now, anyway. But you work here. Like you see, collecting cups, dishing out the coffee, washing up when we're short-handed. We're nearly always short-handed here. Like I say, I noticed you last night. When I was up to my eyes with all that mobbing, I couldn't get a chance to come over and say howdy. Ah, you are American, yes? Do us a favor, will you, mate? Sydney's my hometown, Australia. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm from France. Yeah, I kind of thought you might be. Are you, uh, looking for someone? Yes. Someone I thought I might find here. Anyone special? Or just anyone? Somebody I know. Did you ever meet someone here, a man called uh, Buller? No. No, I never heard of him. I think he comes in here sometimes. Yeah, well, so do about a million other customers. Uh... Sorry, sport. Can't help you. Anyway, I've got to get back to the dishes. Uh, sure you don't want another coffee? No, I'd better go. Thank you, anyway. San Ferrian, Frenchie. The pleasure's all mine. See you around, maybe. Yes, maybe. But this place in Earl's Court, this coffee bar... I'm sorry, I cannot tell you any more. Then how are we supposed to help you? My dear, I don't begin to understand. But if Nico is in danger, or if you are, why don't you go to the police? It is not possible. The police cannot help me now. Oh, not again. You are expecting someone? It's probably the laundry. I'll go. Stay there, Karen. I won't be a moment. Mr. Benson, you look at me as if you do not believe what I say. Do I? You think I have come here to tell you lies? I don't know what I think, yet. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were the laundry. Mrs. Benson. That's right. My name is Plessy. My secretary told me that you were good enough to call at the school this morning when I was out. Oh, Mr. Plessy, how do you do? do. Excuse me, let me put that laundry box on the hall today. Oh, allow me. Oh, yes, oh, do, do come in. I don't want to take up very much of your time, but I felt it was only fair to explain what has been going on. Well, I'd be very glad if you would. Perhaps you could uh, sit down? Yes, of course. 
I'd take you into the sitting room, but, uh, well, my son's in there. He's on holiday from Oxford, and he's supposed to be studying, well, and I, I don't want to disturb him. That's right, Mum, you won't disturb me. Uh, this is my son, Neil. How do you do? Hello. Neil, are you sure we shan't be in your way or anything? Oh, no, Mum, don't worry. I heard you talking to Mr. Plessy, and uh, I'm just as intrigued by this mystery as you are. Uh, do come in. Take a chair, Mr. Plessy. Oh, thank you. What a delightful room. And you have a magnificent view from these windows. Yes. I think you said something about an explanation. Quite. Since I went to the police station this morning, I know a little more of the facts. Mm -hmm. The principal fact is that there was never any such person as Félix Bonton. He does not exist. But I saw him. Ah, the boy you met was Nicolas Gachet. He is wanted by the French police. Hey, how about that, man? Somehow he left France with a forged passport and arrived at my school posing as a student. And I suppose he got scared. My own theory exactly, Mr. Benson. He was afraid that his pretense might be discovered and decided that the only safe way to avoid capture was to disappear. Mm. But simply to disappear would have aroused suspicion. So he staged a drowning accident. Uh -huh. Félix Bonton would be presumed conveniently dead and Nicolas Gachet could make his escape. <laughs> but I don't think he will escape for long. What do you mean? We know now from your helpful information, Mrs. Benson, that the boy was making his way to London. Once the police start looking out for him, he won't get very far. I see. There was one other thing we couldn't quite understand. Uh, the Swedish girl my mother spoke to this morning. She, she told you she was Swedish? Well, I thought I recognised the accent, that's all. Ah, yes, you have a good ear, Mrs. Benson. She is, in fact, from Stockholm. Apparently, she tried to pretend that she yes, was your... Yes, yes, she's a rather difficult girl. We've had some trouble with her. Uh -huh. She got herself involved with the Gachet boy, and it seems fairly certain that she helped him in his attempted getaway. Have you questioned her about her it? Naturally. Unfortunately, at the moment, she's... She's being very uncooperative. But no doubt she'll tell us the truth eventually. I'm only sorry that you should have been troubled with all this unpleasantness, Mrs. Benson. Oh, please don't worry about that. I wish I could have been more helpful. Not at all. Goodbye, Mrs. Benson. Uh, Mr. Benson, I'm very pleased to have met you. Goodbye, Mr. Plessy. I'll Goodbye. see you to the door. Oh, please don't bother. Oh, it's no bother at all. Well, once again, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Benson. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh. All clear. All clear. When he headed for the sitting room, I thought I was going to collapse. Where on earth is Karen? I was here all the time, behind the sofa. We heard Plessy's voice in the hall. I don't know how to say thank you. Well, I only hope we've done the right thing. Oh, you have. Believe me, you have. Yeah, all the same, it seems to me you owe us a few explanations about yourself. Explanations? Don't you think you might have mentioned, somewhere along the way, that your boyfriend was wanted by the police? He's not my boyfriend. Just a friend. Yeah, but he is on the wrong side of the law. Well, yes, but you must believe Nico is not a criminal. He is a good boy, only he got mixed up with this smuggling racket. They're blackmailing him. Smuggling? How did he get mixed up? Accidentally. He found out about it by accident, and now he knows too much. If he went to the police, they would say he was one of the gang and he would be framed. By the time Nico proved he is innocent, they would have destroyed all the evidence and escaped. Who do you mean by they? The people who organise it. One of them is a man called Buller. He is in London. Well, that is why Nico's gone to find him. He has the brains behind the whole thing. Nico must get some real evidence before he can go to the police. You said one of them. There are others? There is Mr. Plessy. Oh, come on Don't now. you understand? That's how Nico got to England. Plessy fixed it all up. The forged papers, everything. That's why I had to hide from him. It's true. He has a very unpleasant personality. And his eyebrows meet in the middle. I remember my grandmother saying you could never trust men whose eyebrows met in no, the I'm middle. sorry, this is where I get off. The rest of the story's wild enough, but Plessy? Well, the man's a headmaster, a solid, respectable citizen. I really can't accept that he also dabbles in smuggling as a spare time hobby. That's a bit too much. Oh, Mr. Plessy, you're back. Yes. Were there any messages for me? No, nothing. No telephone calls? Are you sure? Uh, I've stayed by the phone all the time. I see. And the Engstrom girl, she hasn't turned up? No, I'm afraid not. Have you told the inspector yet about Felix Bonton being alive? No, not yet. I'm going to telephone him, of course, uh, in a moment. Mr. Plessy, perhaps I shouldn't say this, but you're in some kind of trouble, 
aren't you? I don't understand you, Miss Hathaway. I can tell. And I just want you to know that if there's anything I can do, anything at all... Thank you, Miss Hathaway. Thank you. I appreciate this very much, but uh, really is nothing. Unless you'd like to make me some coffee. Oh, yes, of course. But I really I meant... know what you meant. I've decided that the only thing to do is to leave the matter entirely to the police. I'm going to telephone them now. Shall I get the number for you? No, no, I can do it. You can attend to the coffee, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, very well, Mr. Plessy. Hello? Buller? <laughs> Plessy, I've got to warn you. The boy isn't dead. It was all a trick. He's somewhere in London, and my guess is he'll be trying to find you. Well, for God's sake, be careful. When he moves in, you've got to be ready to deal with him. It is difficult for us to take it all in at once. You said something about Nico being blackmailed. Well, that's more or less what happened. I told you, Nico was in trouble with the French police. So when he was offered an escape to England, uh, forged papers and everything, he accepted it. All he had to do in return was to bring over a sleeping bag. Uh, you, you know the kind I mean, with, with a thick lining sewn up into squares. Quilted? Uh, yes, perhaps. But there was something hidden in this lining. It wasn't until he met this man, Buller, and handed it over at the place in Earl's Court that they told him what he had smuggled in. Heroin. Oh, no. But what good does he think he'll do by trying to find Buller again? He wants to set up another meeting with him. Only this time he will arrange that the police are there. Yeah, but unless Buller turns up with the stuff on him, he still won't have any proof. <sighs> Strikes me as a very woolly sort of scheme. It's worse than that. It's very dangerous. How do you mean? Well, if Mr Plessy is mixed up in it, he knows now that Nico is alive and in London. Nico will be walking straight into a trap. That's why I'm so frightened. I've got to get hold of Nico and warn him. But we don't know where to start looking. This discotheque place in Earl's Court, do you know the name of it? Yes, it is called the Blue Gum. Blue Gum? Oh, yes, of course. Earl's Court is known as Kangaroo Valley nowadays. Oh, one cappuccino, please. Ah, oh, hi. Back again already? I've nowhere else to go. Still looking for your friend? He's not a friend. Uh, I have to see him on business. Business, eh? If I'm not being too curious, what line of business are you in? I'm a student. I see. But no job, eh? No. You said you were often short of help here. Do you think they would give me some work? I don't see why not. Have a word with the manager, if you like. He's out at the moment. What's your name? Nico. I'm Vince. Glad to know you, Nico. Here you are. One cappuccino. Thank you. It's boiling hot. You can make that last for a long time. I probably will. <laughs> you said you've got nowhere else to go. Don't you have a pad around here? A what? Pad, room, somewhere to stay. Ah, uh, no. What are you going to do, sleep in a park? <laughs> Gets pretty cold about 3 a.m. I know, I tried it once. I spent last night in the waiting room at Victoria Station. You, well, you don't want to make that a regular habit. Look, uh... If you're really stuck for a place, why not dust down at my pad uh, for a night or two? Well, till you find something better. I will go to this blue gum myself and start looking for him. I'll go tonight. Oh, no, Karen, that would be a mistake. But I've got to find him. You're in a very difficult position already. It would be very dangerous for you to get any more involved. No, if anyone is going to London, I shall go. Nonsense. It isn't nonsense. It's the only solution. The car's outside. I can be there in two hours. You're crazy. If anyone goes off on this wild goose chase, I'll go. Well, what's the point of that? You don't even know Nico by sight, and I do. Well, if you go, I insist on coming with you. <gasps> oh, it made me jump. I'll take it. Hello? Mr. Benson. Plessy speaking. May I speak to your mother? Oh, um, just a minute. I'll just turn down the radio. What radio? It's Plessy. He wants to speak to you. Oh, dear. Well, I don't think I want to speak to him. Ask him to leave a message. Say I'm out. Yeah, but how can I possibly... I'll go out into the garden so it won't be altogether a lie. Karen, you can come with me. All right. Hello? Mr. Plessy? That's better. I can hear you now. I'm sorry to bother you again, but I wanted one more word with your mother. Well, I'm afraid she's out. Can I take a message? If you would. 
Tell her it has occurred to me that Karen Innsrom met your mother this morning, and that she, well, she may possibly try to contact her to find out how much she knows about Nikola Gashi. Yes, I suppose that's possible. If she does, will you please notify me immediately? You have my phone number? Yes. Oh, Mr. Plessy, uh, don't ring off. Yes? There was one other thing I meant to ask you. You told us Nicolas Gachet was wanted by the French police. What had he done? Nicolas Gachet is wanted for murder, Mr. Benson. Murder? Are you certain of that? Of course. The inspector told me himself. You can check with him if you want to know the details. It was in Marseille, I believe. Gachet stabbed a man with a flick knife. That's why he's on the run. I see. Oh, thank you, Mr. Plessy. I'll see that my mother gets your message. Thank you, Mr. Benson. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mum? What did he want? Where's my mother? She's just getting into the car. She's made up her mind about going to find Nico. No, we must stop her. I've got to tell her something. It's too late. She's on her way to London. My God. Do you know what Plessy just told me? He said your friend Nicola Gachet is wanted for murder. Yes. That is true. Yes, lady. What'll it be? A cup of coffee, please. How you like it? White, please. With sugar. Sugar's on the tables. There may be a place in one of the booths. I think all the booths are full up. I'll sit here at the counter, if I may. Suit yourself. Uh, may I ask, uh, do you know a French boy called Nico? Nico? Yeah. Seems to me I've heard that name. Sure, I know. Vince? Yeah, boss? That French kid you was telling me about, wasn't he called Nico? Uh, yeah. What about him? This customer was asking. Here you are, lady. One coffee. I'll put sugar in the saucer. Thank you. Yes, sir. What'd it be? Black or white? What did you want to know? You're a friend of Nico. I wouldn't say that. I only met him today. Well, I'm trying to find him. Has he been in here? Will you be seeing him again? Maybe. Maybe not. What did you want him for? He's in very serious trouble, and I think I might be able to help. What kind of trouble? I can't tell you that, but it is desperately important. Okay. He'll be staying at my place tonight. I, I can't talk now, but I'm meeting him later on, when I go off duty. Meeting him? Where? Oh, there's something to write on. Oh, this order pad will do. Now, this is where I live. It's only two blocks from here. Oh, thank you very much. Come round there tonight at... Eleven, okay? I'll be there, thank you. Hey, you haven't had your coffee? Well, it doesn't matter. I've got to make a phone call. Well, there's a phone box right across the street. Oh, yes. Uh, well, till eleven, then. Goodbye. Hey, Vince. Yeah, boss? Get some of those cups, kid, off the tables, will you? Righto. Some people sit over one cup of coffee forever if you let them. <laughs> there's that fella in the next booth. You know, he's been stuck behind his evening paper. God knows how long. Okay, I'll see to it. Excuse me, sir. Have you finished with that cup? Buller. How long have you been sitting there? Hello? Hello. Karen? Oh, Mrs. Benson. I thought I'd better ring to report progress. Is Neil there? Uh, no, he... he's gone out for a little while. I think perhaps he went to meet a girlfriend. And left you all alone? Typical. Oh, I don't mind being left alone. Not now. Well, I have good news for you. I went to the Blue Gum and... You I... found Nico? Not yet, but there's an Australian working there. He knows Nico. Oh. In fact, Nico's staying at his flat tonight. I'm going round there to meet them both at 11 o'clock. I'm going to try and persuade him to come back here with me. I'm afraid it'll be very late, probably half past one before we get back, so don't wait up if you're tired. Oh, I shall be waiting. I couldn't sleep. I'm sorry I missed Neil. Anyway, you can tell him I rang. Uh, yes, I will do that. Well, goodbye, Karen. Goodbye, and good luck. Uh, was that the phone? Yes, I answered. Oh. I was in the bath. I apologise for the towels. I suppose after all that it was the wrong number. No, it was your mother. Oh, damn, you should have called me. What did she say? She's met some Australian who knows Nico. In fact, Nico is staying at his flat. Mrs. Benson is going there tonight at 11. I wish she told me all this. Didn't she even ask to speak to me? Yes, she did. I said you were out. 
What? I knew that if you spoke to her, you would have told her about Nico being wanted for murder. Well, you might have frightened her off, or she might have gone to the police. I didn't want that to happen. You must be out of your mind. I don't think so. She says she will try and bring Nico back here tonight. That will be the safest thing. Safest? My mother wandering around half the night with a murderer. You haven't met Nico. He's not what you think. Well, you said he killed a man. You admitted that yourself. I don't know exactly how it happened, but I know Nico. It must have been some kind of accident. Nico is a good boy. Look, I know love is blind, but you don't even make sense. <sighs> you tell me Nicola Gachet killed a man in France, the police are after him, he's entered this country on a forged passport and smuggled in a load of dope at the same time, and you stand there repeating idiotically that he's a good boy. You are dripping. Uh, what? You are dripping on the carpet. I just thought I should mention it. Uh, oh, uh, I didn't have time to get dry. Perhaps you'd better do that now. When you are dry and when you are in a better temper, perhaps we can then talk. Until then, I do not wish to continue this conversation. Very well. But I've got a lot more to say to you, Miss Engstrom, and believe me, Don't I'm not... wave your arms about, Mr. Benson. One of your towels is falling off. No! Oh! What do you want? Oh, good evening. I want flat number three. Well, the numbers are on the bells. I know, I'm very sorry, but you see, you I... You brought me all the way up from the basement. You know that. Well, I have said I'm sorry. I tried the bell for number three, but nobody answered. Well, then they're not at home, are they? Well, I thought perhaps the bell was out of order. I mean, there are some Everything wires Everything in these out. flats is in working order. Number three, did you say? Yes, oh, an Australian Vince. gentleman. He'll be out, sure enough. He's out a lot of the time. But I made an appointment to see him at 11 o'clock. It's after 11 now. Well, maybe he's changed his mind, Oh, then. no, it's very important he knows that. Yeah. Oh, you better come inside. Sorry I went on at you at first. Oh, that's all right. It's my feet, you see. I, I wouldn't mind the stairs so much except for my feet. Oh, I'm sorry. You must have to go up and down the stairs a lot in a big house like this. Oh, I don't go up much. I don't interfere with the tenants. I keep myself to myself, you might say. I see. Mind you, I get a pretty good idea what goes on. He's in trouble again, is he? Who? Vince. He's been staying out till all hours lately. I know the signs. You've come to have a straight talk with him, I dare say. No, not at all. Well, aren't you from the probation? No. Well, I only met him today for the first time. He's, um, well, a friend of a friend of mine. A French boy called Nico. I don't know if you've met him. I believe he's staying here temporarily. Oh, I never met any French boy. I told you I don't interfere. Well, Nico's staying here tonight. Vince told me he'd be here now. Well, go up and see if you like. It's only the first floor. The number's on the door. Perhaps I'd better just make sure. I'll wait down here. It's my feet, you see. Yes, of course. Uh, you'll, uh, you'd have to excuse the stairs. I, I sent the carpet to be cleaned. Everything gets so grubby in London. It's the soot. It must be a problem. Well, that's the door straight ahead across the landing. It's not quite shut. There's a light on. Oh, well, maybe the bell isn't working. Give him a shout. Nico? Nico, are you there? Well, go on in if you want to. Vince won't mind. Nico, are you... Oh. What is it? What's oh. the matter? Please, come quickly. He's lying on the floor. I think he's dead. <laughs> That was the second episode of Death Speaks Another Language by Peter Ling. Listen to the next episode of Ronald Mason's production of Death Speaks Another Language, The Storm Center. Yes, tomorrow with Nico's plans falling apart, the name Buller looms at every turn. Death Speaks Another Language. We present a radio thriller in six episodes by Peter Ling, with Derek Seaton, David Baller and Hilda Kreisman.
Death Speaks Another Language. Episode 3, The Storm Center. What is he? What's the matter? Please, come quickly. He's lying on the floor. I think he's dead. Your friend? No, the other one, Vince. Oh, God. I knew he was heading for trouble. Didn't I say so? He's on the floor, all huddled up. Oh, what a thing to happen. I've tried to make him see sense, but there's no telling some people. There. Get out of my way, dear. Let's have a look at him. Oh, it's no good for me, all this running up and down. It's my feet, you see. Yes, you told me. Is he... Dead? No, dear, not him. Out cold, of course. Well, are you sure he's breathing? I don't think he's drunk. No. He's in a coma, if you ask me. He's had a fix. Drugs? Oh, I've seen it all before. I know the signs. About a year ago, he got into trouble. I hoped he'd learned his lesson, but there you are. I'll go and ring for an ambulance. Yes, I suppose that would be best. Oh, I don't know about best. It's the only way. Oh, looks to me as if he's taken an overdose, getting himself in this state. It'll mean the police. The police? Oh, no, oh, what is happening, oh, please? Mr. Kanjugari. This is the gentleman from next door. He's in number four. Uh, how do you do? I am very honoured to be making your acquaintance. Mr. Kanjugar is from India. He knows all about this kind of thing, don't you, dear? Oh, no, no. Never am I in trouble with the police. Never. Oh, well. I'm going down to phone for that ambulance. Shan't be a tick. Oh, I wish there was something I could do to help. Uh, and uh, please do not suppose I am here out of mere idle curiosity. But the door was open and... Yes, of course. Uh, well, I, I could not help hearing something of your talk. If the police come, everyone will be questioned. Uh, perhaps they will uh, search my room, eh? Excuse me. You said you couldn't help hearing. Did you hear Vince talking to anyone tonight? Vince? Uh, are you mean Mr. McCafferty? Uh, yes, he had a visitor. A French boy? Nico? French? No, I do not think the visitor was French. And he was older man, I believe. Uh, they talked quietly. I did not hear everything they said, but the uh, voice was English. Oh, I see. Then it wasn't Nico. Oh, no, not that, that was not the name. Uh, uh, let me recollect. Uh, I believe uh, Mr. McCafferty addressed him as bully. Buller? Uh, something like that, yes. Oh, if only I knew what had happened to Nico. Well, that's that. Oh, those stairs, they take it out of me, they do, really. You telephoned? The ambulance is on its way. Next thing you know, the coppers will be moving in. Here we go again. I should have given him notice after last time, but I'm too soft, that's my trouble. Well, if the police come... Uh, uh, excuse me, I, I think I will be getting back to my room, eh? Uh, I wish to make everything tidy. Yes, dear, you do that. What about you? Me? Oh, don't you think you'd better be moving on as well? You don't want to be mixed up in all this. You're not that sort. But shan't I have to tell them? Well, I was the one who found him. I'll say I did. You take a tip from me. See nothing, hear nothing, say nothing. That's my motto. Emergency call, name of McCafferty. Number three on the first landing. OK, Ari, bring a stretcher. Right. Uh, I won't come up if you don't mind. The door's open. Suit yourself, lady. We'll manage. Where to, then? Up here, first floor. Right, come in. I've had enough upstairs for one night. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Hello. Are you looking for somebody, Sonny boy? Yes, a uh, friend of mine, Vince. Uh, I don't know his other name. A friend of yours and you don't know his other name? Oh, yeah, I met your sort before. I'm sorry? Well, don't bother looking so innocent with me. You're wasting your time. He's not here, but he promised me... Oh, he's me here, that... all right, but only just. He won't be needing no visitors tonight. If you'll know what's good for you, you'll push off while you've got the chance. I don't understand. The copper will be here any minute now. The police? Yeah, I thought that'd shake you. Um, mind how you go, Harry. Yeah, all right. You look out for them banisters. Yeah, all right, I've got them. See? Yeah, all right. We're nearly there. All right. There. Ah, okay, lady. We'll be off then. I suppose you'll be taking him to St. Patrick's again? That's right. Night casualty. Ring up in the morning and they'll tell you the latest. So long. Oh, I won't be ringing up. I don't want to know no more. I've right, given him his chance and that's his lot. Yeah? Well, fuck up, Harry. We haven't got all night. But, all right. but what happened? He didn't know when he'd had enough. That's his trouble. Right, right. Here. Here, hold on. You're French, aren't you? Yes. Your name's Nico. Who told you my name? Well, there was a woman here asking for you. Well, she only left five minutes ago. But that is not possible. No one knows I'm here. The police. Don't worry. 
I won't say a dicky bird. Just go. And don't come back neither. You stay out of this, sonny boy. Yes, I will stay out. Thank you. Cheery bye. What, at two o'clock in the morning? How do I know what's happened? I'm only trying to guess. Hey, here she is. Oh, thank goodness, at last. Safe and sound. Yeah, no thanks to you. I should never have let her go. But it is so wonderful. She has found Nico. Oh, what a drive. I was terrified I would fall asleep on the way. But where's Nico? You said you were I going to... I haven't even seen him. Why not? Are you all right? You look pretty rough. Oh, thank you, dear. I know I can always count on you for a compliment. Karen, I'm so sorry to disappoint you, but Nico never turned up. But I thought you had arranged... I arranged everything with Vince McCafferty, the Australian boy. I went to his flat. Nico wasn't there, but Vince was unconscious after an overdose of drugs. So much for Nico's friends. I don't believe it. This Vince is not his friend. He has never spoken of such a name. They only met today. The thing I did find out was that Vince had a visitor this evening. A man called Buller. Buller? The one who organises the drug racket. I don't quite know how he got Vince to take the overdose, but I'm sure he planned it deliberately. But why? He must have found out that Nico was going there and he couldn't risk Vince talking too much. Now Vince is in hospital and safely out of the way. Yeah, not as safe as all that. The police have come down on him as soon as he's ready to answer questions. I do not think he would say anything to put Buller into danger. That would mean cutting off his source of supplies. You seem to know a lot about it. I am not exactly a fool, whatever you may think. Neil, please stop arguing. There's something I want you to do for me. What? Ring up St. Patrick's Hospital in Fulham. That's where the landlady said Vince would probably go. Say you're a friend or something and find out how he is. What, at this time of night? Well, hospitals don't stop working at night, you know. Yeah, neither do I, apparently. All right. Where's the London directories? Oh, Esther Z. Yeah. If they ask you, do not give your real name. In cases like this, it is best to be most careful. Yeah, I'm not exactly a fool, to coin a phrase. Saint, is that under SA or ST? Oh, here we are. St. Patrick's. You can dial London from here? Oh, yes, you can now. Oh, it's ringing. St. Patrick's Hospital. Oh, good evening. I mean, good morning. I want to inquire about a Mr. McCafferty. I believe he was admitted to hospital tonight. I'll put you through tonight, Casualty. Oh, thank you. He's putting me through. Oh, good morning, sister. I'm inquiring about a Mr. McCafferty. I understand yes, he... Yes, I know about Mr. McCafferty. Who's that speaking? Uh, well, um, I'm a friend of his. I see. I'm afraid I can't tell you anything at present. Well, I just want to know how he is. He's as well as can be. Ask if we can go and see him. Yeah, but... Oh, look, can you tell me? I'd like to come and see him as soon I'm as he's... I'm very sorry. I, at present, Mr. McCafferty will not be allowed any visitors except members of his immediate family. Yeah, but surely, when he's a I little really bit... I can't tell you any more than that. If you care to leave your name, I'll see that he gets your message. Uh, no, no, it doesn't matter. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, well, she was highly suspicious. And he's not allowed visitors, except members of his family. Oh, I don't suppose he's got any family over here, but I'm determined to find out more about this man, Buller. I shall go to London tomorrow. We'll all go. What, all of us? I thought about it on the drive home. It's perfectly simple. We'll go directly after breakfast, all three of us, and we'll stay there till we find Nico. That might take weeks. Well, you're on holiday. You've nothing else to do. We can stay at Regent's Park. With Aunt Maud. Why not? She's always complaining she never has any visitors, and she's got that huge house full of empty rooms. She'll be delighted. Mrs Benson, I cannot tell you how grateful I am for all your help. Oh, don't be silly, my dear. It's the only thing to be done. Now, I suggest we all go to bed and try to get some sleep. Uh, Mum, before you go up... Yes, dear? Uh, can I have a word with you? I will go upstairs. I know Neil wants to talk to you privately. I won't be a moment, Karen. I noticed she stopped calling you Mr Benson. Oh, she's a nice girl, isn't she? Mom? Oh, yes, and Nicola Gachet is a good boy. Do you know what I found out while you were away? Apparently, Nicola Gachet is wanted for murder. He killed a man in a knife fight in Marseille. There must be some mistake. Nico's not a murderer. He couldn't be. Good morning. Good morning. Well, what'll it be? Black or white? Uh, thank you, but I do not want cafe. I want a job. Ah, is that so? 
Well, we're not looking for staff at the moment, sorry. But Vince told me that You're you would... a friend of Vince McCafferty. Please excuse me, I've got a customer to attend to. Hello, Mr. Lockett. It is Mr. Lockett, isn't it? The great Ray Lockett himself. If you say so. <laughs> you know, I didn't recognize you at first with the long hair you've grown, the glasses. Your eyes not so good now? Oh, that's, that's bad. Do us a favor, will you? Everybody wears granny glasses nowadays. It's a gear. Oh, well, you've certainly come a long way since you used to play guitar here Saturday night. <laughs> Nobody can turn on the radio now without you hear Ray Lockett and his band. Not band, Pop. It's a group, the String Vest. Hey? That's the name of the group, Ray Lockett and the String Vest. See the band outside? Got their name on in psychedelic lettering. Ah, sure, sure. Well, it's very good to see you, Mr. Lockett. What you like? A nice cup of coffee? Yeah, but I'll settle for the kind you, mate. Ah. Oh. Yes, great sense of humor, Mr. Lockett. Your success don't change you. Una cappuccino coming up. Please, I would like to talk to you when you... Enough now, son. Don't you see? I got a customer. Yeah. You know who that is? Mr. Ray Lockett, that's who. I don't know him. Donna Ray Lockett? He's a big star. Pop records, always on the radio. And me? <laughs> I knew him when he was a nobody. One cappuccino for you, Mr. Lockett. On the house. Look, I'm a friend of Vince. He told me he was going to speak to you about Son, me. Son, if you're a friend of Vince McCafferty, you please should stay out of the blue gum. I got troubles enough. But he said you need help washing up. Washes up I need, but not your sort. Nothing personal, son, but Vince, he was always a very tricky boy. Unreliable, you know what I mean? Now they tell me he's in trouble with the police. We don't want no trouble here at the blue gum. Morning. Good morning, sir. What'll it be? Coffee? Black or white? Neither. I'm on duty. Oh, yes, I see what you mean. You're the plain clothes, eh? Aye, that's it. I just want to ask one or two questions about Vince McCafferty. Just routine. Only take a minute. Well, uh, what the sort of things you want to know? Oh, the usual stuff. Who are his friends? How did you meet him? Who introduced you to him in the first place? I want to know how long he'd been working here. Did you find his work satisfactory? Did you have rows? That sort of thing. I I'm sorry. That's OK, my friend. I didn't spill a drop. Hey, I thought I was a nervous type, but you were in the championship class. <laughs> You're wound up like a G-string, you know that? Maybe. Listen, you in trouble with the fuzz? The what? The blue bottles. That copper over there. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. OK, I'll tell you what we'll do. Oh, but he must have had friends. They are the ones I want to know about. He must have met some of them, seen them anyhow. I can't remember names. Oh, there were a few different ones, always different. Generally, boys about 20, 25, sometimes younger. Uh, when I came in, you were talking to a customer. He was pretty young, and you mentioned something about being in trouble with the police. Oh, did I? <laughs> well, maybe I did. <laughs> uh, maybe you did. Well, would he be a friend of... Where's he going? Who? That boy, the dark one. Was he one of McCarthy's friends? How would I know? I never see him till five minutes ago. And then when I started asking questions... He suddenly decided it was time to leave. Huh. Which way did he go? Outside. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. Hey, <laughs> all right. He can't be far away. I'll find him. Don't you worry. He's looking up and down the street. Keep your head down in there, kid. I am. Ah, oh, it's OK. He started walking towards the corner. Ah. Oh. For a big fellow, he can certainly move. All right, he's gone. Let's be on our way. It's very kind of you. All part of the Ray Lockett service. I oh, don't go, policeman kid. I've been on the wrong end of too many question and answer games myself. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Round it up after a couple of wild parties. What they got on you then? Been caught smoking? Smoking? Yes, what? Where'd you come from, anyhow? France. Oh, sure. Tell me it's a big thing over there. Which way are you going? I'll drop you off anywhere you say. Anywhere will do. I'm not going anywhere. There isn't anywhere to go. Sounds like a nice life. Sometimes I get angry to do nothing, just bum around like you. What do you do for bread? You mean I'm a hungry? Ah, bread. Oh, I forgot you're a stranger in town. Bread's cash, money. Oh! Oh, I haven't got any money. What are you, some kind of mystic? You gotta eat sometimes. Can't live on pot. Mind you, I've known them as tried. 
Tell me, did you ever hear of a man called Buller? Ah, oh, sir, that's what you do in a blue gum. You won't get far with Buller unless you got cash on the nail. Promises not accepted. I suppose not. You comfortable back there? That gets a bit cramped with the guitars and drum kit and all. You can climb over into the front seat. Oh, I'm all right. You're a musician. That's one way of putting it. The man behind the counter, he told me you are a pop star. Star question mark. Sure, we're on the upgrade right now, moving up in the charts all the time. The fan mail's building up every week. There's the messages scribbled all over outside the van. They say, I love you, Ray, in 52 different ways and 52 different kinds of lipstick. <laughs> Those crazy birds. Hey, listen, is that right? You, you've got nothing to do? Oh, nothing in particular. Then why don't you come with me? I'm on my way to a session in St. John's Wood. A session? Yeah, a recording session. Oh. We've got six new tracks to cut. I'm late already. You come along and be my alibi, OK? Alibis, alibis. You were supposed to be here half an hour ago. Like I told you, Sid, I met this friend of mine. I had to give him a lift. Ah, oh, sorry. Nico, this is my manager, Sid Schumann. How do you do? Glad to know you, son. Ray said I could stay and watch the session. Well, you like this kind of music? I don't know exactly. Well, I know, and believe me, I've had a barrel full of it. I keep smiling, Sid. Ballads is definitely coming back. Are you in this business, son? Oh, no, I'm a student. What he means is he needs a job. Listen, I'll give you a piece of advice. Get yourself a nice, steady place in an estate agency. No matter who's at the top of the charts, people will always live in houses. Hey, Sid, Dickie's making faces at you in the control room. Oh, right. Is this Mike live yet? OK, Dickie, the boy's all ready. You're ready, aren't you? All set, raring to go? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, that's what I like about you, Ray. You're keen. Take off those glasses. All these lights bother Take me. Take them off. I want to look at those bags under your eyes. Oh, look. I thought I told you to get an early night last night. So? Something cropped up. Uh, you look terrible. Do you realise you're doing a PA tonight? Son, does he look in a condition to meet his fans at the PA? A what? Personal appearance. Oh. For one week only, Ray Lockett in the string vest will play every night at the Storm Centre. Book early and avoid a rush. Uh, what is the Storm Centre? I never heard of it. Ah, oh, it's a new place. Psychedelic lighting, happenings, blue movies on the ceiling, you name it, they got it. Sid, think he's going raving mad in that control oh, okay. room. You better go in there before he breaks out in a rash. OK, OK. You calm yourself, Dickie. Remember what your analyst told you. I'm on my way. Listen, I've had a thought. Do you really want to find yourself a job? Yes, I have to. I right, stick around. When this is over, I'll take you along to the storm centre. Maybe nothing very special. Clearing tables, washing up. Still, who cares? Oh, I don't mind what it is so long as I can make some uh, bread. <laughs> ah, you catch on quick. OK, fellas, here's a cue light. Wait for the green and take it in four. A one, a two. Three coffees. One, two, three. Thanks. Thank you. Karen, do you take sugar in coffee? Uh, please. Sugar's on the tables. Just, just a minute. Ain't I seen you in here before, lady? Yes, I was here yesterday. Yeah, you, you was asking about the French boy. Nico, yes. Do you know where he is? Ah, oh, you're out of luck. He was in here this morning. Oh, dear, what a nuisance. We have to find him. It's very important. You won't find him in a hurry. He's... He's hiding out from the police. What makes you say that? The inspector came in here right after the boy, and the boy did a vanishing trick. So, so quick it wasn't true. He's scared, I can tell you that. Yes, I expect he is. That's why we've got to find him. Are you quite sure he didn't say anything that might help us? Anything at all? No, not a thing. I tell you what, though. Yes? I'm not sure, mind you, because I, I didn't see them go, but... I believe your friend went away with Ray Lockett. So here you are, and the job's yours. It was very kind of you to speak to the manager of the club. I'm grateful. Oh, don't kid yourself. There's nothing to get excited about. Stuck down here in the cellar in charge of the cloakroom. Hope you don't have any trouble with claustrophobia. Oh, no, this is very good for me. And the work is not hard. They told me it's mostly to look after the shoes. Shoes? <laughs> Well, the customers don't wear hats and coats, but you cannot go on the dance floor unless you take off your shoes. It's a rule of the club. Sounds like fun. Oh, well, you win a couple of quid a night, that's the main thing. Yes. By the week, you should be able to start talking business with Buller. Business? Sure. But I warn you, Buller never passes up a chance to get the customers hooked. That's where the real money is. Next thing you know, you're a mainliner. 
And from then on... Hello? What? Shh. Somebody outside the door. Hang on. Oh, so, so there you are. Sorry, Sid. Did I startle you? I thought I heard somebody outside. Well, I was looking for you, that's all. We've got to work out the routine for the show. I'm oh, sure I'll be up in a minute. I was just congratulating Nico here. Did you know he's landed himself a job in charge of the shoe department? Oh, that's good. Don't be too long, Ray. I think Mr. Schumann does not like me. You don't need to worry about that. All I want to know is, how much did he hear? I want to speak to Inspector Crow. Tell him it's Mr. Schumann. Yeah, OK. Hello, Inspector. Sid Schumann. Uh, listen, I think maybe we can do each other a favour. I'm speaking from the Storm Centre. It's the new club at... Oh, you know it, yeah. Well, I just happened to overhear a conversation which might interest you. There's a young French boy here by the name of Nico. I don't know his other name, but from what I hear, he's a hophead. Yeah. A and uh, he's chatting up my boy, my client, Ray Lockett. Well, it's like this. Ray's a good lad, but he's weak, you know what I mean? I wouldn't like him to be led astray. Well, this is it. The storm centre. It's certainly very unusual. W what is going on? I it is hard to see with all these lights flashing. I don't know exactly. The people look so extraordinary. There's one girl over there dressed in a kind of fisherman's net. Hmm? No, you'd better not look, Neil. Oh, it's all right. I think she's wearing a body stocking underneath. You want to bet? Well, I hate to say I told you so, but you were the ones who insisted on coming here. Oh, it's so hot and stuffy, too. I'm sure they don't have any kind of ventilation. But would you like me to take your coat? There must be a cloak room. Yes, there is, but I'm told it's mainly for shoes. And as I have no intention of joining that scrummage on the dance floor... Go on, Mum. You'd be a sensation doing the pally glide in your bare feet. Don't be facetious, dear. I simply want to find this Mr Lockett and then leave as soon as possible. But did you ask the man on the door? Oh, yes, I asked him. He said Ray Lockett is very busy and can't be disturbed before the show. So I said it was very important and we'd wait. Oh, I only hope we don't have to wait too long. That flickering light's giving me a headache. The electronic music has given me a headache already. Excuse me. Are you the young man who was asking for Ray Lockett? Yes, that's right. Are you a friend of his? No, not exactly. We're more friends of a friend. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realise you were all together. I'm Sid Schumann. I'm Ray's manager. Oh, my name's Benson. This is my mother. Mrs Benson, how do you do? And do Miss do? Engstrom. How do you do? I'm sorry, but you can't talk to the boy right now. The group going to their act straight after this. If you'd like to give me a message for him, I'll see he gets it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll have to stop the dancing right now. May I have your attention, please? What's the idea? Ray's not due on for another ten minutes. If you'd all take your seats, we have some surprise guests here. They're not by my invitation, but they've just dropped in from the little old police station around the corner. The police? Neil, what... Shh! Stay where you are. OK, take it easy, everybody. I'm sure nobody wants any trouble. It's just a routine check-up. Why don't I keep my big trap shut? Excuse me. Neil, what on earth are we going to do? If they ask us what we're doing here... Well, tell them we're on a coach party. Well, I'm not thinking about us. I'm worried about Karen. If Mr Plessy has reported you as missing Karen, then... Karen, where is she? Oh, that girl's a menace. I told her not to move. Well, I'd better try and find her. How do you know where to start? She kind of went out through the main door. That's thick with coppers. There must be a back way. I'll try downstairs. Yeah, be careful. That chap in the raincoat's got his eye on us. You go and talk to him and distract his attention. What on earth do I say? Uh, good evening, officer. Good evening, sir. If you'll just take a seat, I'll be along for a word with you in a few moments. Do you intend to keep us here long? It's uh, very inconvenient. Oh, I'm really sorry about that, sir. It's just a matter of a few questions. Well, I'd like to know just what you're supposed to be looking for. As far as I know, there's no law Are against Are you a us. member of this club, may I ask, sir? Uh, well, certainly. Well, I mean, well, yes, I think so. When we came in, the chap on the door collected a guinea from me as a membership fee. Yes, sir. Um, but are you aware that by law you're required to allow 24 hours to elapse between becoming a member and using the facilities of the club? No, I, I didn't know. <laughs> Look here, you can't treat me as a criminal. I've got my job to do, sir. Yes, badgering respectable citizens and prosecuting them for parking offences. Oh, I'd have thought in this day and age you'd have better things to do than just walk around places... If you don't mind my saying so, sir, I've heard all this before. I suggest you sit down for a few minutes and try to cool off, eh? And, uh, by the way, what happened to those two ladies who were at your table? Karen? Karen, are you there? 
<laughs> what is happening? Oh, Nico! You! I remember you in the car. What are you doing here? Let's say I've just been doing a little detective work. Detective? You followed me last night. It was you. I didn't understand before. What do you want? The police are upstairs. You have led the police to me? No, Nico. You don't understand. What are you doing? You should not have brought the police. Don't be ridiculous. Open that door. Be quiet. Please, Nico. Be sensible. I want to help you. You are lying. This knife has killed once already. I do not want to do this. But you make me. It's not my fault, you understand? It is not my fault. That was the third episode of Death Speaks Another Language by Peter Ling. Listen to the next episode of Ronald Mason's production of Death Speaks Another Language, Dressed to Kill. So as you heard, Death Speaks Another Language tomorrow at the same time when Buller and his contacts seem omnipresent, but Nico's allies remain undaunted. Death Speaks Another Language. We present a radio thriller in six episodes by Peter Ling, with Derek Seaton, David Baller, and Hilda Kreisman. Death Speaks Another Language. Episode four, Dressed to Kill. You should not have brought the police. Don't be ridiculous. Open that door. Be quiet. Please, Nico. Be sensible. I want to help you. You are lying. Now, this knife has killed once already. I do not want to do this, but you make me. It's not my fault, you understand? It is not my fault. What are you going to do? I have to get away. You would not leave me alone. You keep hunting for me. Now I must run away and hide like an animal. And you... You have done this. Oh, you don't understand. Give that knife to me, please. No. Who's that? Mrs. Benson, can you hear me? Shh. This door's locked. Where's the key? Mrs. Benson. Uh, do not speak to him. Uh, I, I must get out. No, you can't. There is a window at the back. Nico, don't. Don't try to stop me. Mrs. Benson, are you all right? Where is he? He's gone. And good riddance. Oh, it's all a mistake. If only he'd let me explain. Never mind that now. Where do you live? I'm, I'm staying at Regent's Park. Come on, I'm taking you home, lady. My car's outside. I'm sorry we had to make such a quick getaway, but if the police started asking questions, you'd have been there all night. Yes, that would have made things difficult. I'm very grateful to you, Mr... Schumann. Sit Schumann. Oh, yes, of course. Everything happened so fast, I, I don't seem able to think straight. Well, you managed to get through that little window and up the steps quick enough. Leaping about like a two-year-old you were. <laughs> I take my hat off to you, lady. I do, really. Oh, you're much too kind. No, I mean it. At our time of life, it's not so good getting mixed up in things like this. <laughs> That's why I kept my eye on you when all the trouble started. Then, when I saw you go downstairs into the cellar where that little rat was hiding out... I... If I may say so. I think you've got the wrong impression of Nico. Nico? You mean, you know him? Well, slightly. That's why I came to the club, to find him. Lady, I've got to speak frankly. The French kid is no good, believe me. Oh. Believe me, I know the type. On the surface, he seems calm and quiet. But when the chips are down, he's wild and dangerous. Well, that's because he's frightened. When people are desperate, they're, they're liable to do stupid things. All that nonsense with a knife. Knife? He threatened you with a knife? Well, it was only to protect himself, really. 
He's only a boy. Sure, but a boy like that with a knife in his hand, he could wind up killing somebody. Yes, that's the unfortunate part about it. Apparently, he already has. Oh, don't do things like that to me. I almost went into a lamppost. Are you telling me the boy's a killer and you feel sorry for him? That's right. Either you're a very wonderful person, or else you're out of your mind, or both. Well, this is Regent's Park, now where? Oh, straight on for a little way, then right at the traffic lights. But you really shouldn't bother to bring me all the way. I had my own car, but we left in such a hurry, I... Neil! Neil? My son! How dreadful! I'd completely forgotten about Neil and Karen. What do you suppose happened to them? Will you kindly unlock this cell and let me out immediately? I demand to get in touch with my solicitor. Do you hear me? Hey, Austin, that's why he's been carrying on these last half hour. Oh, yes, uh, Mr. Benson. Inspector, this is an outrage. You have no right to put me under arrest. You are not under arrest, sir. You are assisting us in our inquiries. All right, Harris, unlock the door. And about time, too. Uh, now, take it easy, Mr. Benson. I'd hope that a few minutes sitting quietly on your own might give you a chance to cool off so we can talk things over like two reasonable men. Well, I'm being perfectly reasonable. I've been reasonable from the start. How about that bit when you shouted that your second cousin was a friend of the Duke of Finborough? The Home Secretary had my guts for garters. Uh, well, I was a little overwrought. Yeah, understandably, no doubt. All right, Harris, leave this to me. Yes, sir, I just thought you might like to know about Mr. Benson's influential connections. Well, Mr. Benson? Well, Inspector, I suppose I've made the most frightful ass of myself, you know, flying off the handle and all that. Mm -hmm. well, you certainly became rather aggressive, sir. One might almost say that uh, you were obstructing the police in the course of their duties. Oh, might one? And all we want to do is ask you one or two questions. I take it you're not an habitual customer at the Storm Centre? Oh, no, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Well, I told you, tonight was the first time, definitely. Mm. Well, may I ask who introduced you to the club in the first place? Uh, nobody. I just heard some of the chaps at college mention it, you know, in passing. Mm -hmm. It sounded like a pretty good spot for an evening out, that's all. A spot of dancing, a few noggins. Oh, you've been drinking then, had you, sir? Oh, well, in point of fact, no, I hadn't, no. Your chaps turned up before I'd even ordered the first round. It's a bit of a washout, really. Oh, now, let's see, uh... You had two ladies in your party. One was your girlfriend and... Oh, well, I suppose you might put it like that. And the other lady, sir? The other lady's my mother. Really? Do you generally go out on the town with your girlfriend and your mother? <laughs> We're a very united family. Anyway, you see, the whole thing couldn't be more innocent. I mean, dash it all. Do I strike you as a criminal type? Oh, well, frankly, sir, no. Oh, thank you very much. Well, in that case, there's no real point in you keeping me here, is there? I really ought to be toddling back to the club. They'll be wondering what's happened to me. And I'm wondering what's happened to them. Funny music? Yes, I am. My kind of music? Oh, yes, I like the guitar. But I really cannot stay now. It is late. Oh, it's your hurry. Come belting into my dressing room like a streak of blonde lightning looking for a place to hide. I told you I did not want to be questioned by the police. My family would not have been pleased. I would have had to go home to Sweden. Oh, sure. I understand that. I'm very understanding character. That's why I kept quiet and let you stay here. Well, that was one reason. And the other reason? I'm rather partial to blonde streaks of lightning. Please, Ray, you have been very kind, but now I must go. Oh, I wouldn't if I were you. I bet the fuzz is still crawling all over the club. Much better wait until everything is quietened down. But I have waited so long already. Well, I'm doing my best to while away the time. Or am I only wasting my time? I'm not in the mood for music at the moment. So forget the music. How about a smoke? Oh, no, I don't smoke. Don't tell me that. Have one of these. It's a real thing. What do you mean? I roll them myself. All genuine stuff, no rubbish. I see. Yeah. Uh, no, no, thank you. Not just now. But I would like to ask you a question. Oh, go ahead. Do you know a man called Buller? Uh, you're a very surprising girl. You know that? I never tied you up with Buller. Are you in the hard stuff? Uh, let's just say I have heard a lot about Buller. I'd like to get in touch with him. Oh, <laughs> so would a lot of people. 
Please, if you can help me. Oh, please don't laugh at me. Who's laughing? Oh, come here. No, no, no. Closer than that. Ray, I need your help. Oh, yeah. And I need yours. Buller. OK, you can phone him any time after nine, but don't say I told you. You have his phone number? Sure, it's easy to remember. Vintage double three double four. Double three double four. Do I just ask for Mr. Buller? No need. He always answers the phone himself. N no, don't go away. <laughs> I must. It's it's getting so late. Oh, not yet. I've done my share. Don't I get a thank you? Thank you. Now, now let me go. Oh, no. You, you've got to be sincere about it. <laughs> like this. That's what I call sincere. So there you are. Oh, Neil, thank goodness. This room's private. You can't come barging in here. Take your hands off her. Who the hell do you think you are? I'm sorry, we haven't been introduced. My card. <clears throat> come on, Karen. We're getting out of here. There she goes. Last of the coal barges going up river. I wish I was on board. Oh, cheer up, matey. It's always darkest for dawn. There you are. One cup of coffee, one cheese sandwich. Thank you. Well, I'll be one and tuppence. You've, uh, you've got yourself in a jam, ain't you? Why do you say that? Well, a look on your face. Ah. <laughs> and this time of night, most of my customers have got some sort of problem. Otherwise, what are they doing walking up and down Chelsea Embankment when they ought to be asleep in their beds? That's, uh, that's one and tuppence, matey. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, three, six, nine pence, ten, eleven. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> from to go. Try your other pocket. I, I was sure. I thought I had, um... There you are. What's that? Ten bob note? No. An address someone wrote for me. Oh, this ain't written. It's printed. Classy-looking note, paper and all. Suzanne K. Seven Magnolia Walk. What? Show me. There you are. It's the top off a letter. Darling Vince, you were simply fab. <laughs> Here, are you Vince? Oh, no. Ah, I understand now. Vince, uh, he's a friend of mine, or he was, and he scribbled his address on the back for me. How do you mean he was a friend? He can't help now. He's uh, in hospital. Oh, dear. Flat broke and nowhere to go. Is that it? Yes. I'm sorry. I owe you threepence. Oh, you could take my watch. Nah, you hang on to that, matey. Looks like you're gonna need it. We'll call it quits, eh? Have this lot on me. You're not the chiseling type. Thank you very much. Now, how about this lady? Suzanne, what's her name? Magnolia walks only just up the road. It's one of them small little streets off a of Chinese row. But I don't know her. Well, you know Vince, don't you? And he knows her. Knows her very well and all by the sound of it. Go on. What have you got to lose? Yes, that is true. What have I got to lose? What the hell do you want? Oh, I'm sorry to disturb you. I should damn well think so. Do you realize what time it is? After one o'clock. It's nearer two, and I was fast asleep. Who are you, anyway? Do I know you? I'm a friend of Vince, Mr. McCafferty. Oh, really? That's simply lovely for you. Well, look, Mr. Whatever your name is, I, I'm in no mood for social calls, so you just run along and tell your friend I've Vince... I've nowhere else to go. Oh. Well, it, it's pitch dark out there. Step inside and let's have a look at you. I'm so sorry to make so much trouble. Well, a little trouble never hurt anyone. What's your name? Nico. Nico Gachet. Oh, come in, Nico. Sit down. Have a drink. I'm awake now. Oh, please don't bother oh, with... It's no bother at all. Whoever sent you, you're welcome. Now, what'll it be? Gin? Vodka? Scotch? A little whiskey, please. Straight or on the rocks? Straight. I take soda with mine. They say it's sacrilege, but uh, I say you live longer. Or am I just kidding myself? Cheers, Nico. Cheers. Mm, that's better. Who did you say sent you? Vince McCafferty, and as you are a friend of his... Oh, I wouldn't say that, exactly. As a matter of fact, he did a couple of jobs for me. Modelling jobs. 
It was a good physique, but uh, <laughs> too soft-scented. Oh, you are an artist? A photographer. Didn't you know that? Uh, that? That's some of my work on the end wall. Far be it from me to boast, but Suzanne Kay is a pretty well-known name in the magazine world, among uh, several other worlds. But, of course, you're a stranger in these parts, aren't you? Uh, French. From Marseille. Ah. Oh, put that overhead light out, will you? Gives me a headache. Just leave the table lamp. All right. All right. Now, oh, what are we going to do with you, Nico? I need to find a job. Yes, that's what I thought. Ever done any modelling? No, no. Would you like to try? Oh, no, I, I do not want to have my picture taken. <laughs> Why not? Don't tell me you're shy. No, it's not that, but... Uh... Oh, I get it. You uh, don't want your picture in the papers, is that it? I just want to find an ordinary job to keep me alive until... Until? There is someone I have to find. Uh, a man. Uh, a man called Buller. Buller? You've heard of him? No, I, I never heard of him. But, uh, listen, I've got an idea. Maybe I could help you. How? Well, I've started a new thing a couple of months ago. After doing fashion pictures for so long, it seemed an obvious step. As a sideline, I opened a men's boutique in the King's Road. <laughs> Dressed to kill. <laughs> it's a corny name. But the point is, the layabouts I laughingly call my staff always running out on me, leaving me up the creek. I could do with a new sales assistant. How about it? Does the idea appeal to you? Well, I would like to try. Great. You can start tomorrow morning. And I suppose you'd uh, better stay here for tonight, anyhow. Stay here? There's a midget-sized guest room. Ah. It's better than nothing, uh, just till you get yourself fixed up somewhere else. But you've hardly touched that drink. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, don't apologise. You look flaked out. My prescription for you is a hot bath and then fall into bed. And no arguments. Uh, I am rather tired. Sure. I'll go and run the bath. It's right through here. There are plenty of towels. Well, I'd better rustle up some pyjamas for you, hadn't I? Uh, there should be some in the cupboard. Oh, thank you. I always wear men's pyjamas myself. It's so much more convenient when I have visitors. Uh, Here, catch. Uh, thanks. Now off you go and have a good long soak. And you don't fall asleep in the tub. Oh, I won't. I I'm sorry to be such a nuisance. <laughs> For Pete's sake, stop apologising. Go on. It's fantastic. Oh, it's simply fantastic. D telephone, where's that damn phone? <sighs> Buller? It's Suzanne. Look, I, I must talk to you. Another cup of tea, Karen? Uh, no, thank you. How about some more toast? No, really, I don't Good morning. Think... Well, Neil, your egg will be stone cold. I don't want any breakfast, thank you. I didn't sleep very well last night. But it's almost ten o'clock. Yeah, when I did finally drop off, I overslept. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. Where's Aunt Maud? I took hers up on a tray. Karen, do go on with what you were saying about Mr Lockett. Oh, not that again. I was trying to explain that before you interrupted, I was having a very interesting conversation with Ray Lockett. Conversation? Yes, dear. He offered her a marijuana cigarette. At least we think he did. He also gave me Buller's telephone number. What? You see, I was being extremely efficient. I persuaded him to tell me the number. <laughs> I bet you lost the paper you wrote it down on. I did not write it down. I remembered it. Vintage double three double four. Suppose you remembered wrong. Impossible. All right, we'll soon see. Oh, do be careful. If Mr Buller answers... He will. Ray says he always answers the telephone himself. It's ringing. The Redcliffe Institute, good morning. Oh, uh, can I speak to Mr Buller, please? I'm sorry, we I have no Mr Buller here. Oh, but isn't that vintage double three double four? Yes, this is the Redcliffe Institute. I think you must have a wrong number. Good morning. Oh, goodbye. 
<coughs> well, so much for your brilliant detective work. Either you got the number wrong, or else Mr Ray Lockett fobbed you off with the first number he thought of. No, he was quite serious. Vintage double three double four. It's the Redcliffe Institute, yeah. and there's no Mr Buller there. The switchboard girl was quite definite. But there must be. This Redcliffe Institute, what sort of a place is it? Well, only just about the most famous private clinic in England. But that is the number Ray gave to me. Ring any time after nine, he uh, said. We've reached another dead end. Every lead we get fizzles out into nothing. There's still Vince McCafferty. They won't let anyone visit him. Anyone except a close relative. Here we are, another customer. Now, do your best to flog the suede ties. They're sticking like glue. I was not very successful with the last customer. Oh, this one looks as thick as lentil soup, dear. You shouldn't have any trouble. Uh, good morning, sir. Can I possibly help you at all? Uh, well, uh, well, yeah, well, I want a pair of jeans, the, uh, the light-coloured ones, you know. Our prefaded denims, yes, certainly, sir. I'm sure Monsieur Gachet will be able to assist you. Monsieur Gachet, please. Good morning, sir. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I want a pair of jeans, uh, ta very tapered, you know. This way, please, sir. Good morning, sir. Oh, hello. Is she in? Madam's in her office. Shall I tell her you're here? Don't bother. I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go in and surprise her. Waist 32. No, I'll show you what we've got. We have the different kind of pocket. Yes, yes. Hello, Suzanne. What the hell? I told you not to come here today. I rang particularly. Yes. Yes, I know you did. Well, don't you understand? It's getting too risky. Besides, I don't need any more of the pills yet. I, I've been cutting down. Stop kidding, Suzanne. I knew as soon as I heard the excitement in your voice on the phone that you were lying to me. It was perfectly clear you didn't want me to come here. <laughs> so naturally, I got inquisitive. I wanted to know the reason. But I've just told you the reason. No, I've just seen the reason out there in the shop. Hmm? I only met him once, but I have a good memory for faces. His name is Nicholas. <laughs> Nico Gashi. Oh, you're so clever. Fortunately, he was rather busy, and he hasn't seen me yet. Don't make trouble. I, I won't tell him anything. I swear I will. <laughs> He's the one who's making trouble. It's got to be stopped. No. Look, look, let him stay with me, just till the panic dies down. I'll look after him, Buller. J just don't do anything stupid. Stupid? <laughs> Do I ever do that? If you're looking for the Neben ward, it's at the other end of the corridor. Oh, well, no, I want to see Mr. McCafferty. The porter told me he was in a private room. Yes, he is. But I'm afraid he's not allowed to see visitors at present. Except close relatives. Oh, I see. Are you a, a relative? You might tell him his aunt is here to see him. Aunt Maud. Oh. Well, you'd better go in. Number three, through that door. Thank you so much. But you mustn't stay more than five minutes. He gets tired very quickly. Good afternoon. Hmm. What? Who are you? I don't expect you remember. We only met once. Uh, I don't understand. I... I'm not supposed to see visitors. I don't want any visitors. Well, if anyone asks, I'm your Aunt Maud. I what? won't stay long, but I had to see you. It's about Nico. Nico? Hey, wait a minute. I'm beginning to remember. You were looking for Nico. That's right. My name is Benson. <laughs> Buller sent you here, didn't he? No, he didn't. But it is Buller I want to talk about. I believe you can help me. I don't, I don't want to know. You better go away. Vince, listen. This is desperately important. Just go away and leave me alone. Nico's in danger. You're the only person who can help him. You've got to tell me how I can find Buller. I said go away. What are you doing? I'm ringing for the nurse. Look, you've got no right to come here, lady. I'm sick. Please, Vince. It's because of Buller you're in here, isn't it? I don't know what you're talking about. Did you ring? Yeah. Will you tell this lady to get out? But she's your aunt. My family are all in New South Wales. I never saw her before in my life. What? Yes, isn't it ridiculous? It's, it's all been a silly mistake. Uh, 
My nephew is a different Mr. McCafferty altogether. I think I must be in the wrong hospital. Just go away. I don't understand. Well, neither do I, but uh, don't you worry about it. I dare say it'll all sort itself out in the end. <sighs> Goodbye, Mr. McCafferty. I must remember to tell my nephew I met you. He'll be so interested. I knew I should have gone to the hospital with you. It wouldn't have made any difference. Vince is obviously terrified of Buller. Nothing on earth would persuade him to talk. But you think he knows? Well, I can't tell how much he knows, but it's a great deal more than he's saying. Look, we can't discuss it out here on the pavement. We'd better go and get some tea somewhere. Do you think they have tea in the King's Road? Or is it all coffee and Danish sandwiches? <laughs> Way out boutiques. <laughs> Look at that place. Dressed to kill, honestly. Why do they have machine guns in the window? I think it's meant to be a joke. Somewhere inside that jungle of suede ties and corduroy shirt. What's the matter? Karen, dear, you look as if you've seen a ghost. It's not possible. Inside the shop, I thought... Yes, look! It's Nico! I believe you're right. Shall we go in? What are we waiting for? Good afternoon. Can I possibly help you at all? Uh, yes, I want to buy a tie. Of course, sir. Did you have anything special in mind? Uh, well, uh, what about one of those suede jobs in the window? A, a, a suede tie? Oh, yes, sir. What a splendid idea. I'll get my assistant to attend to you. Monsieur Cachet. Good afternoon. Karen! Oh, do you two know one another? What are you doing here? Nico, thank goodness we have... The gentleman is interested in suede ties. Perhaps you could show... But me. how did you find me? It was a complete accident. There's quite an amusing range of colours, from deepest midnight blue... I don't think you've met my son, have you? Nico Neal. How do you do? Hi. To a simply virginal white, if you happen to be in the mood. Why are you chasing after me? Who has sent you? Nobody has sent us, but so much has happened. We, we ha had to find you. Now look, far be it from me to break up a party, but do you or do you not want to buy a suede tie? Uh, no, thanks. I've changed my mind. Well, really? Really? Don't you understand, Nico? We're trying to help you. Yes, so you said when the police came. Police? Oh, this is impossible. Can't we get away from this place? Somewhere where we can talk. I have a job to do here. Sweet of you to remember. What time do you finish work? Uh, six o'clock. We'll meet you back here at six, OK? At the rear of the premises, if you don't mind. The staff leave by the back door. There's a little street behind the shop. We'll be there at six o'clock. Oh, come on, let's go. Oh, and thank you very much for all your help. Charming. We picked an ideal meeting place. This little street's absolutely deserted. Except for the workmen up on that building site. What workmen? I bet they all knocked off an hour ago. Union rules. No, there is someone up there, among the girders. Look. Hmm? I can't see anybody. Well, I just saw his head. Well, he's gone now. I can't imagine why they keep putting up these great skyscraper blocks. Oh, there he is! Nico! Karen? There is someone up on that scaffolding. <gasps> oh, that girder, it's moving, falling! Nico, look out! <laughs> That was the fourth episode of Death Speaks Another Language by Peter Ling. Listen to the next episode of Ronald Mason's production of Death Speaks Another Language, Ring After Nine. And at the same time, tomorrow, the Bensons and Karen find they have delved too deeply. Nico cannot be allowed to tell them what he knows. Death Speaks Another Language. We present a radio thriller in six episodes by Peter Ling, with Derek Seaton, David Baller and Hilda Kreisman. Death Speaks Another Language. Episode 5, Ring After Nine. We picked an ideal meeting place. This little street's absolutely deserted. Except for the workmen up on that building site. What workmen? I bet they all knocked off an hour ago. Union rules. No, there is someone up there, among the girders. Look. Hmm? I can't see anybody. I just saw his head. 
Well, he's gone now. I can't imagine why they keep putting up these great skyscraper blocks. Nobody wants them. Oh, there he is! Nico! Karen, there is someone up on that scaffolding. <gasps> oh. That girder, it's moving! Falling! Nico! Look out! <laughs> Workman up on the roof. Workman? He must be joking. He's alive. Nico, you're alive. What, what oh, happened? Where did that come from? The building site next door. Somebody gave it a shove as you came out. I couldn't see his face. It all happened oh. so quickly. I imagine it was your friend Buller. He's not a friend of mine, as you can see. Can you stand up? Here, let's give you your hand. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. When Karen screamed that time to jump for this doorway, if you'd not been there, I, I think I would now be dead. Don't. Do you suppose he's still there? He'd have been away over the roofs long ago. Well, I don't propose to hang round here to find out. Our car's at the end of the street. Come along, Nico. Where are we going? You're coming back. You're going to stay with us. Are you sure Auntie won't come back unexpectedly? Oh, no. This is the evening when she goes out to play bingo. She won't be back for hours. It's very good of you to invite me to stay here, but I think I should go back to Miss Kay's house. She will be expecting me. How old is this Miss Kay? Does it matter? Oh, she's quite old. I must try to find out how Buller knew I was working at her shop. I did not tell anyone. While we're on the subject of telling things, suppose you tell us a few facts as well. How do I know I can trust you? You don't. On the other hand, how do we know we can trust you? Neil, stop being difficult. Nico is a friend. You all seem to ignore the fact that your friend is wanted for murder. Yes, that is true. I told them it was all an accident. Oh, no one will ever believe that. Uh, it was in Marseille, in one of the cafes on the waterfront. There are many dangerous men there, smuggling, gun running, you know? Yeah, we've got a rough idea. Go on. Well, a friend of mine, he had been working for men like this, and now he'd had enough. He wanted to get out. So they came looking for him in a gang. One of them had a knife. I tried to break it up, but there were too many of them. I still do not know how it happened. All I remember is Jean-Paul lying on the floor, and suddenly there was this knife in my hand. Somebody was calling for the police. Are you saying you were framed? Yes. I did not stay. I ran and ran. Now the police look for me. They say I am a murderer. But you must tell the police the truth. Oh, perhaps I should have done so. But there were witnesses ready to swear that I killed Jean-Paul. Anyway, it's too late now. I took the first chance that came to me to get out of France on a forged passport. With a sleeping bag stuffed with heroin. You know. I told them. Of course. So now you see why I cannot go back. Until I find Buller. Until I can prove I am innocent. Well, Neil, now you've heard the whole story. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry I behaved stupidly yesterday at the club. I thought, I thought you were my enemy. I did not understand then. I knew that, but there was no time to explain. We have been trying to track down Buller. Without any success, whatever. Our best contact was that Australian boy, Vince McCafferty. But he's in hospital anyway. He does not know Buller. If he told you that, I'm afraid he was telling lies. It's because of Buller that he's in hospital now. What? Well, I tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't trust me. I wonder... I think perhaps he might talk to me now. Neil, do you remember the telephone number? Uh, St. Patrick's Hospital? Uh, yeah, I've got it scribbled down somewhere. It's in Fulham. Oh, yes, here it is. Ask what time visiting hours are in the evening. Nico could say he's a long-lost cousin. Huh. Hello, St. Patrick's? Oh, good evening. I'm inquiring about a Mr. Vince McCafferty. Yes. You what? When? I see. No. Oh, thank you very much. Good night. What is it? Why are you looking like that? McCafferty was transferred this afternoon to a nursing home as a private patient. He's gone to the Redcliffe Institute. Redcliffe Institute, good evening. Mrs. Bridey? Yes, I'll put you through. One moment, please. You're through. Oh, good evening. Good evening. I believe a friend of ours was transferred here this evening from St. Patrick's Hospital. Is it possible to see him? From St. Patrick's? Uh, what name is it? McCafferty. Vince McCafferty. Oh. Oh, dear. What a pity you didn't ring up first. I'm afraid you can't see him. Oh, if it's a question of relatives only. No, it's not that. 
nobody can see him. I, I mean, he... Oh, dear, this is very awkward. What's wrong? I don't suppose I should tell you, really, but I'm new here, you see. I, I don't really know whether oh, I can... please, you must tell us what's happened. Well, the doctors were ever so upset about it. It was so mysterious. It must have happened somewhere along the way, between leaving St. Patrick's and arriving here. Nobody knows how he got hold of it. But there was a hypodermic syringe by his bed. He's on the danger list. I want to see Mr. Lockett, please. Mr. Ray Lockett. Oh, sorry. I don't think Mr. Lockett wants to see anyone right now. Oh, tell him it's important. Say it's Karen. He met me last night. Karen? Okay, don't go away. Well, well, <gasps> fancy seeing you here of all places. Oh, you made me jump. Sorry, I had to walk quietly. I've been training you all the way from Regent's Park. Not bad, eh? For a beginner, I mean. I think you are contemptible. Go away. Yes, I somehow guessed you might be heading for another cosy little rendezvous. I suppose he gave you his address last night. If you must know, yes, he did. And now please go and leave me alone. Oh, no. I'm coming in with you. Don't be stupid. I'm only going to try and find out some more about Buller. Strictly business, in fact. Uh, nothing personal. Of course. Well, in that case, you won't have any objection if I join you, will you? Oh, you... You... Are you still there, Karen? Uh, yes. Well, he says he can't wait. Come on in. It's the door facing you at the end of the passage. Thank you. For the last time, will you please... Not a chance. All for one and one for all. That's my motto. Come on, the door's open. Don't you understand? You're going to ruin everything. It's a chance we've got to take. Oh, there you are. Oh, no, it's a party. Well, our host is simply dying to see you. That's if he can see anybody. Oh, excuse me, I thought you were alone. I was. And then she decided she couldn't leave me behind. We're such very close friends. Oh. Well, why not? The more the merrier. Come and join the gang. You'll find Ray somewhere underneath that cloud of smoke, if he's still responding to stimuli. You mean he's a little... Uh... As a kite. <laughs> but our time will come, don't worry. I arrived a bit late, that's why I'm still answering the door. Well, kiddies, slip into something loose, grab a drink, have a drag, and mingle. That's Ray. Suppose he remembers you punched him on the chin. I can always do an encore. Karen, baby, light of my lovely life. This is what I call a real surprise. What did I invite you? Only in the broadest possible terms. I've seen you before somewhere. Right. Last night. Something happened. Did you take a swing at me? Right again. Give the gentleman a gold watch. Why, you... <gasps> Neil! <clears throat> it's all right. He only overbalanced. Ray, get up. <laughs> fell down. One minute standing up, the next fell down. <laughs> Come here, baby. Let go of me. Oh, don't be like that. Come here, join a party. Light up. No, thank you. So you've got to come and do a party if you don't join in. I didn't even know about the party. I came to ask you something. You want to know how Leave we... this to me. Ray, listen. Last night you gave me a telephone number for Buller. Did I? Is he here now? Buller here. <laughs> you have to be joking. Catch Buller at a session like this. <laughs> All right. But, but listen. This morning I tried ringing that number you gave me and they had never heard of anyone called... This morning? I told you ring after nine. Nine at night? Who's alive before midday? Any time all through the night, vintage double three double four. Matter of fact, I told him about you. You did what? True, last night I spoke to him. Told him you'd be getting in touch. Just to make it all nice and easy for you. He's expecting you to call him. Come on, Karen, let's go. Ah, don't go. You, you just got here. You, you stay with me. I really can't. Oh, but I'm lonesome. You can't walk out of me now, baby. Oh, yes, you can. Good night, Mr. Lockett. Pleasant dreams. Oh, I don't want you to go away, sweetheart. Oh, I need somebody to be with me. I must be left on my own. Oh, I need someone young and beautiful and shining like you are. Do you know that? You're all shining. Golden, that's what you are, all gold, all over, dazzling. Who are you talking to, Ray? This girl, this beautiful, beautiful girl. Where is she? Oh, she's gone, Ray. She walked out. Forget her. Forget her? Give me a singie. Forget who? Be
careful what you say, Karen. Mr. Buller? Speaking. Uh, who is that? You don't know me. My name is Karen. I was given your number by Mr. Oh, Rayla... yes. Karen. Yes, I've been waiting for you to call. Uh, hold on a moment, would you? Ah, that's better. Now we can talk. What can I do for you, Karen? I'm a friend of Ray Lockett. Oh, yes, I know that, Karen. What else? Uh, Ray said... Uh, well, he said you might... Uh, we might... Uh, do business? <laughs> yes, I think that might be possible. What sort of a deal are you interested in? Oh, I... I don't want to talk about it on the phone. Very wise. May I suggest that we meet and discuss it? Yes, that would be very much better. Oh. Uh, do you know a discotheque at Earl's Court called the Blue Gum? I have been there, yes. Splendid. Then let's meet there tomorrow at three o'clock. Uh, but how will I know you? Uh, don't worry. Order a coffee, take out a cigarette, and then ask for a box of matches. I'll do the rest. Till tomorrow, Karen. Yes, uh, thank you. Karen, Blue Gum, 3 p.m. Vintage double three double four. Buller, it's busy. I've been trying to ring you ever since nine o'clock. Yes, I've been rather busy this evening. You sound a little agitated, Andrew. What do you expect? last couple of days. Ever since these kids bolted, I've had the police on my neck. Gently, Andrew. There's no point in saying too much on the telephone. I've got to talk to you. I'm at my wit's end. I have to close down the school and send all the students away. I... What am I going to do? Sit tight. Do nothing and say nothing. Don't you understand? They're on to me. We've got to pack up and clear out before it's too late. I've got to see you. All right, Andrew. Perhaps that would be best. Can you get up to London? Yes, but... Don't say any more. We can decide what to do when you get here. Just try to keep calm. It'll all work itself out. Good night, Andrew. Mother, please. Good night. Who's that? Oh, oh, Nico. Thank goodness. Are you surprised to see me? No, but... Well, I was so worried. What happened? Where have you been? Out. Yes, I know that, but you... Oh, uh, wait a minute. I I'll turn this thing off. I it's so late. I, I was afraid something had happened to you. Why? Well, I don't know. Uh, when you didn't turn up or, or telephone or anything, I, I was wondered... nearly killed. Hmm? Is that what you expected to happen? No. It was because of you, wasn't it? You talked to Buller about me. I don't know what you mean. Don't lie to me. It couldn't be anyone else. You told Buller. <laughs> I, I couldn't help it. He, he came to the shop and he saw you. When? You were busy with a customer. I tried to keep him away. I, I begged him to leave you alone. Oh, that was he... kind of you. <laughs> don't look at me like that. I, I did everything I could to, to persuade him. Why to... did you tell me you'd never heard of the man? <sighs> I'm not exactly proud of knowing him. I didn't understand why, why you wanted him. I, I still don't. I, I suppose I got scared. How well do you know him? Oh, it's only a, a business thing. Ah, drugs, cannabis. No. Well, at least he sells me some special sleeping pills. Ah. They're the only kind that do anything for me. My, my own doctor won't prescribe them. He doesn't realise that I need something strong to knock me out. Otherwise, I, I lie awake all Is night. Is Buller a doctor? Yes, I think so. A, a sort of doctor. He works at a clinic, I believe. Ah. What, what did you mean when you said you were nearly killed? When I came out of your shop at six o'clock into the little back street, Buller had set a trap for me. <gasps> a steel girder was deliberately toppled from the building overhead. It came straight for oh, me. No. Luckily, I had some friends oh. there. They shouted. I dived into a doorway just in time. Otherwise, You I'd... must go to the police. Oh, that is not possible. I see. It's like that. Hmm? Look, Nico, 
I'll help you. I swear I'll help you. Oh, how? We'll go away together, abroad. It, it, it's the only way you'll be safe. I haven't even got a passport. Well, I know people. It can be fixed. I, I'm certain it can. We'll go to New York. I, I've got some money over there. You, yes, but what about me? Well, you'll get a job, and I'll look after oh, you. Oh, no, Suzanne. You've nothing to worry about. We'd be together. No. Oh, you're so stupid. Don't you see what I'm trying to say to you? I've fallen for oh, you. No, you want me to keep as your pet. No! Oh, I'm very grateful for what you've done. But that's where it stops. And I'm staying in London till I get Buller. Nico, don't be a fool. He's tried to kill you once. I'm going to bed now. No, don't. Don't. Stay and talk. At least listen to what I've got to say. It's for your own good, Nico. I, I'm offering you a whole new life. It's the only way out for you. Nico! Oh. <laughs> right now, the plan of campaign. Now, you sure you've really got it into your head? You treat me as if I was six years old. Sometimes you appear to be even younger. You've got crumbs on your chin. Where? There. No, uh. there. Here, yeah, hold still. When you've both quite finished... Hmm? Oh, sorry. Now, I want to go over the timetable again. It is very simple. At three o'clock, I go to the Blue Gum to meet Buller. I ask for a coffee, take out a cigarette and ask for a box yeah, well, of lunch. You're going too fast. Now, before that, at half past two... Neil and I go to the clothes shop. The boutique. You make it sound like a rag and bone merchant. Oh, such a silly word. Boutique only means a shop. Look, can we have a language discussion another time? And we go to the shop at 2.30 to collect Nico. Suppose he won't come. We'll have to come. We need him to identify Buller as the man he met in London the first time. Once we tell him you're meeting Buller alone, he'll be there, don't you worry. Then we go straight to the blue gum and keep out of sight until you contact Buller. Then I go to the police. And they catch him red-handed with the drugs on him. I only hope it works. I'm getting sick of the sight of those suede ties. I shall suggest to Suzanne that we present one to every customer as a free gift. You think the customer would accept them? Yes, well, maybe you've got a point there. Oh, talk of angels. Good morning, lovey. We're getting quite anxious. Why? Well, far be it from me to cast the first stone and all that, but it is nearly lunchtime. Is it? Yes, well, um, we were wondering about the suede ties. They do seem to be losing their irresistible appeal. Uh, later. Talk to me about it later, will you? Of course, lovey. Was there anything you wanted? I'll be in my office. Um, uh, Nico? Yes, Suzanne? Come in for a moment, will you? I, I, I want to talk to you. All right. You do not look well. <sighs> I don't feel well. I couldn't begin to get any sleep without pills last night. And then I took four. It was fine while it lasted, but uh, this morning... I'm I... sorry. Is that polite sympathy or an apology? Just that I'm sorry, truly. Have you thought any more about what we discussed last night? Oh, not really. Oh, Nico, why not? As long as you stay here, caught up between the police on one side and Buller on the other, you're in a trap. Maybe. That's why you've got to think it over, seriously. Oh, change your mind, Nico. My offer still stands. It's your last chance. My mind is already made up. Forgive me. I see. All right. I forgive you. I'd better get back to work. Yes. Thank you, Nico. That's all for now. Very well. Oh, uh, good morning. Is that the police station? My name is Suzanne Kay. I have some information. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, it's you. And we're still not buying suede ties. We're so sorry, but we have to talk to Nico. Oh, what's the matter? Well, I know we're not terribly busy, but we can't turn the place into a social centre. Well, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't important. It's about Karen. Where is she? At the Blue Gum. She's arranged to meet Buller. What? Monsieur Gachet, I really do think I shall have But you've to got insist. to come with us to make sure that the man really is Buller. But then what? Then we do what you should have done from the very beginning. We call a policeman. Nico, will you please get rid of them? Good afternoon, sir. Can I help you? I'm looking for Mr. Gachet. Nicholas Gachet. Oh, this is getting completely beyond a joke. You've got another caller. Who? 
I'm from Chelsea Police Station, Mr. Gashay. We've been trying to contact you for some time now. The police? I think it would be more convenient if you'd come along to the station with me now, sir. We uh, want to ask you a few questions. Oh, we can't sure you talk. Are you all acquaintances of Mr. Gashay? Oh, hardly. He only began work here yesterday. As for this lady in general... They are customers. I see. I'm sorry to have to do this, sir, but acting on information received... Someone told you I was here. Who was it? I don't think we need to go into that at the moment, sir. Now, if you wouldn't mind... All right, I will get my coat. Uh, where would that be, sir? In the back of the shop. What can we do? Nothing. But we must get to Karen. It's almost three o'clock. Good afternoon. Hello there. What'll it be? I want a coffee, please. One coffee. Black or white? White. One white coffee coming up. Oh, you want a light? Yes. Well, I really want a box of matches. Allow me. Thank you. Don't mention it. Keep the box. Oh, no, really. No, go on. Keep it. Your coffee, miss. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Am I right in thinking you're a friend of Ray Lockett? Yes. Uh, he told me about you. You made a great impression on Ray. And I do see why. Oh, you're very kind. I'm delighted to have met you at last. I have been wanting to meet you as well. Uh, but you want to talk business, is that it? Well, yes. Obviously, we can't talk here. Oh, but I thought... I am not a door-to-door -door salesman, my dear. I don't carry samples about with me in a little attache case. No, I suppose not. This is a useful meeting place. My flat is only just round the corner. I suggest you finish up your coffee and we can go back there. I don't think... <laughs> you don't have to be nervous. I never mix business with pleasure. It wasn't that, but... Uh... But what? You want to buy... And that's where I keep the stuff. It won't take very long. No. Well, all right. After you, my dear. I'm back. Oh, thank heavens. I didn't know where to find you. I've been simply frantic. Well, what's the matter? Is Nico... Not gone. A detective came in. They've taken him to the police station. Oh, I see. Goodness only knows what he's been up to. He was a dark horse and no mistake. If you ask me, we're well rid of him. As soon as I saw him, I said to myself, well, dear, he may be dishy, but he's trouble, oh, I said. Oh, don't! Well, lovey, what is it? Here, you better sit down. I'm all right. It was you, wasn't it, that called the police? I had to. Well, I think you did the right thing. We didn't want any trouble here. Oh, you don't understand. I, I had to do it. For him. What do you mean? He was in a jam. It had to be one or the other. At least he'll be safe now. She's not here. We're only ten minutes late. Surely she'd wait. Hello there. What'll it be? Good afternoon. We don't really want anything, thank you. We're looking for a friend, a girl. She was supposed to be here at three o'clock. Perhaps you remember her. We were in here yesterday, all three of a us. A blonde girl, Swedish, about 19, very pretty. Oh, sure, sure, I remember. Yes, she was in here. When did she leave? A few minutes ago, lady. You only just missed her. But she wouldn't simply walk out. Was there someone else with her? Sure. A man, one of our regulars, comes here often. Oh, do you know his name? He don't know my name, I don't know his. But Karen actually went out with this man? That's right, lady. And don't ask me where, because I don't know that either. Nobody tells me nothing. She must be crazy going off with him like that. We've got to find her. But she could be anywhere now, anywhere at all. Come in, my dear. You have a nice flat here. Yes, I find it convenient. Uh, that's the sitting room straight ahead. Go in and make yourself comfortable. I really cannot stay very long. I... Karen Engstrom. It's a small world. Mr. Plessier. I didn't know... You, you did not tell me there was anyone here. No, I'm afraid I didn't. I wanted to see if my hunch was right. What is she doing here? She pretended she wanted to buy some cannabis. But that's not the real reason, of course. <laughs> She's working for her boyfriend, Gashi. 
I, I don't know what you're talking about. I want to go. Ah, don't be in too much of a hurry. What's that? <laughs> don't you know? It's a hypodermic syringe. Well, for God's sake. Now Karen is here, Andrew. We don't want her to leave, do we? Not for a long, long time. <laughs> That was the fifth episode of Death Speaks Another Language by Peter Ling. Listen to the final episode of Ronald Mason's production of Death Speaks Another Language, Crisis Situation. And in Death Speaks Another Language by Peter Ling, Mrs Benson was played by Hilda Kreisman, Karen Engstrom by Patricia Gallimore, Neil Benson, Derek Seaton, Nico, David Valor, the receptionist, Francis Jeter, Ray Lockett, Alaric Cotter, Buller, Henry Stamper, Plessy, Geoffrey Wincott, Susan Kay, Cecile Chevreau, the salesman, Ian Thompson, the detective, Michael Deacon, and the boss, John Gabriel. As you heard, it was produced by Ronald Mason and the story concludes after the weekend. Death Speaks Another Language. We present the final episode of Peter Ling's radio thriller with Derek Seaton, David Valor and Hilda Kreisman. Death Speaks Another Language. Episode 6, Crisis Situation. What are you doing, Bula? Looking at her pupils. Yes, the injection's taking effect. Is she, is she going to... She'll be out cold for several hours. Now, that shall give us all the time we need. Time for what? We've got a lot to do, Andrew. It won't be very long before somebody traces the girl and we can't stay around here waiting to be picked up. That's what I said. We've got to get away. Leave her here and go. If we panic, Andrew, and make a bolt for it, then we're leaving a trail a mile wide. They'll be onto us in no time. What do you mean? I mean we've got to cover our tracks. There's still time enough. No, it's too risky. The other way is suicide, Andrew. For a start, I've left things at the Redcliffe Institute. Now, I shall have to go on duty this evening just like any other day and clear up. Then tomorrow morning... We can't wait that tomorrow long. Tomorrow morning we catch the first plane to Madrid. Then on to South America. I'll leave you to make the reservations. Oh. Well, if, if you really think... It's that... our only hope, Andrew. And first of all, we must go through this flat. We must collect up every shred of evidence, destroy the lot. We won't leave them so much as one cigarette stub. Mm -hmm. The flat must be completely anonymous. Yes, all right. But... but... What about... Karen? <laughs> yes, she presents a bigger problem, but I can keep her quiet for as long as I need. But when we go... We shall have to take some other action. Now, we'll talk about that later. I'm not going to be a party to anything irrevocable. I told you. We'll discuss that when the time comes. Now, the immediate task is this flat. Now, we better start on the bedroom, clear everything out, and then go through with a vacuum cleaner. Mm, how about letters and papers? Burn everything. And then put the ashes down the lavatory. <laughs> You've got it all worked out, haven't you? Not quite. But I find I rather enjoy a crisis situation. It sets the adrenaline flowing. Adrenaline? Come on, let's get to work. Mum, coffee. Oh, I don't feel like coffee, dear. I've got to find her. I'm sorry, I know how you must be feeling. What do you mean? You're very fond of Karen, aren't you? Oh, Mum, for goodness sake, you're as bad as he is. He? The chap behind the counter. He thinks Karen's my girlfriend. Well, I only said yeah, I know I... what you said. Just being sentimental and ridiculous. Karen doesn't mean a thing to me. She's stubborn and stupid and infuriating and... And you've got to find her. Yes. I've been thinking. Do you suppose Buller's taken her to the Redcliffe? The clinic? Why? Well, Nico's friend said he's some kind of doctor. 
So presumably he could arrange to have her admitted as a patient. Well, what good would that do? She's not ill. Yeah, well, Vince McCafferty wasn't ill until Buller got him in there. Well, if he's tricked her somehow... Neil, you're spilling your coffee. Oh, damn the coffee. I'm going round there to find out. But she may not be there at all. She may be on her way back here to meet us. Yeah, I suppose that's possible. All right, you wait here in case she turns up. I'll go to the Red Cliff. This <coughs> smoke gets in my throat. And that's the last of the papers. Now, help me pick up all these ashes. Shall I open the window? And have somebody from the flat upstairs coming down to say, excuse me, is something burning? Leave it as it is. But this smoke... It'll soon clear away. Uh, now, that's better. I'll take this lot through to the lavatory. You're sure you've collected all the papers? You've not left anything important? You can't take anything for granted, Boer. Even a grocery bill, an envelope. Anything might give the police the clue they're looking for. Do you hear, Andrew? <laughs> I told you not to worry. Isn't, what about clothes? Luggage? It won't take me ten minutes to pack a couple of suitcases, and your bags are where you left them in the hall. Now, we've still got plenty of time. Time? Before I have to go on duty. Now, we are going to give this place the biggest spring clean you ever saw. <sighs> I hope we're doing the right thing. Don't just sit about biting your nails. Now, you get the vacuum. I'll fetch some soap and water. What for? Paintwork, doors, handles. Everywhere there might be fingerprints. Oh, my God. I never thought about fingerprints. Exactly. You didn't think, but I did. But if I'm going to stay here tonight, I, I can't sit still without touching anything. It won't be for very long. I'd already decided I won't stay at the clinic all night. I, I don't understand. I should be able to clear up everything at that end before midnight. Then I'll ring up and tell you when I'm ready to leave. You get a cab and bring the luggage to the air terminal and I'll meet you there. Yes, yes. So you'll ring me about midnight? I will, Andrew. And after I've called, don't forget to wipe the telephone clean. And the gas tap. What gas tap? I shall need you to make the final arrangements about the gas tap. What are you talking about? You go too fast. Look, the girl's the biggest danger of all, isn't she? <laughs> Now we've got to make sure she can't tell the police anything. Yeah. When they find her, the post-mortem will show that she's taken drugs. The explanation will be quite obvious. In her fuddled state, she tried to turn the gas fire on and collapsed. The tap will still be on. The room will be full of gas and Karen Engstrom will be asphyxiated. Do you expect me to do that? It shouldn't be beyond your capabilities. Now, all you have to do is spill some matches on the carpet and leave the gas on just before you walk out of the flat. No, better still, use her hand to turn the gas tap. They may test it for fingerprints. No, no, I couldn't do that. To save your own skin? I think you could, Andrew. I think you've got to. I'm sorry, I'm afraid Dr. Marcus is gone. Yes, of course, in the morning, any time after ten. Good night. Can I help you? I'm inquiring about a new patient. I'm afraid visiting hours are over now. Uh, well, if you could just tell me how she is. What name is it, please? Uh, Engstrom. Karen Engstrom. But she may not be registered under that name. Oh, well, that does make it rather difficult. Just a moment. No, I haven't got an Engstrom here. Uh, she'd be one of Dr Buller's patients. Dr Buller? Yes, that's right. How extraordinary. You're the second visitor I've had asking about somebody called Buller. I've checked the staff list very carefully. There's no one here by that name. But there must be. He comes on duty at night. It's quite impossible. I know the names of all the night staff. Well, perhaps there's somebody else I could ask. I'm sorry, you can't go through there. The clinic's closed to visitors now, and I shall be going off duty myself quite soon. If you leave your name and address there, I'll make inquiries tomorrow morning. Excuse me. Redcliffe Institute, can I help you? Uh, Miss Carrington Jones? Oh, I don't know whether she can speak to you now. She may have settled down for the night. Hold on a moment. Oh, staff, it's reception. There's a call for Miss Carrington Jones. Is she still awake, do you know? Oh, good. Just a moment. Yes, it's all right. I'm pushing you through now. It's better. Sorry to have kept you, sir. Where's he gone? Well, really, some people. You're sure you don't mind me sitting here, just waiting? For you, lady, any time. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'd like it. Mrs. Benson, as I live and breathe. What? Oh, Mr. Schumann. Good evening. It's a pleasure to see a friendly face. Uh, would I be intruding if I sat at your table? Of course not. I do appreciate that, Mrs. Benson. 
I really do. Can I buy you a coffee? No, thank you. I've had four. You don't say. Well, how about something else to break the habit? An ice cream sundae with nuts. They're delicious. No, thank you. So you'll just have the one ice cream sundae. Chop nuts, right? With my ulcers? Give me a coffee. <sighs> this way I'll be dead before I'm a millionaire. <laughs> well, well, this is a big surprise. The last person in the world I expected to find. You know, you make me forget my troubles. Oh, I'm sorry. You've had a bad day. I've spent the last three hours in Chelsea Police Station, and the sight of you, well, it's like an oasis in a desert. The police station? All right, don't kick me out. I was there on behalf of a client. Me, personally, I get on very well with the coppers. Live and let live, you know what I mean? But uh, my boy, Ray Lockett, frankly, he's just a natural-born schmo, if you'll pardon the expression. I'm sorry, I I'm being very dense, Oh, it's a but... drug charge. They rate... Uh... One coffee. Oh, uh, coffee, thanks. Help yourself to sugar. No extra charge. Have yourself a real bargain. Now, where was I? You said a drug charge. Oh, yeah, that's right. This afternoon, they raided the boy's flat. He was found to be in possession of a quantity of cannabis resin. Hashish. Reefers, you know? Yes, I know. But why? Who knows? When you and me was kids, did we need drugs to enjoy ourselves? I'm sorry, maybe it's not a polite subject to discuss with a lady. Mrs. Benson, I've been talking too much. No. No, not at all. Is it something I said? Look, if I've said anything out of line, you tell me to drop dead. I'm sorry. I expect I'm overtired. Well, suddenly I... I just can't go on pretending. Trying to make conversation. You want I should go? Oh, no, please don't. Mr. Schumann, I'm so worried. I don't know what I'm going to do. Okay, so tell me, what happened? Come in. Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. What for? Well, I'm obviously in the wrong room. I've been wandering up and down corridors, and I seem to have got myself lost. Hey, you're new, aren't you? I haven't seen you before. Yes, uh, I'm... Yeah, I'm new. Oh, things are looking up. I'm sorry. I'd better go back to the reception Oh, no, desk. don't go away. There's no rush, is there? Come and sit down and talk to me. I'd better not. What's the matter? Do you object to this nighty? It is rather an eye-opener, isn't it? Look, I'll pull the sheet right up to my neck. There. Look, I really have to go. I'm looking for... Looking for your room? What sort of patient are you anyway? They won't let me get dressed and go strolling around. Oh, I'm so bored I could scream. Sometimes I go for a stroll without getting dressed. They get simply furious. Have you been here long? Five minutes in this prison is too long. I'm only in here because my family hate me. What's your excuse? Well, I'm... Well, as a matter of fact, I'm not really a patient. Oh, don't tell me you're a doctor. How simply heavenly. Can I be your patient? Uh, no, no, I'm not a doctor. I'm looking for a friend. Oh, I'll be your friend. Oh, I'll be I'm, I'm looking for a girl for called Karen Engstrom, to... a Swedish girl. I thought she might be here. Why don't you sit on the bed? There oh, was no I'd name like on the door, to... so I thought perhaps she might be oh, in Oh, this... I took it down. I won't let them put my name on the door. Why not? My dear, the publicity. You know what reporters are like. You see, I happen to be Amanda Carrington Jones. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't understand. But my father's one of the richest men in Europe. We're always in the papers. Oh, I must have missed it. Of course, it's my stepmother who's turned him against me. I'm quite harmless, really. Oh, I'm sure. And you don't know anything about Karen Engstrom? Who? Oh, your Swedish friend? No. Oh, stop going on about her. It's quite pointless. I wonder if you know somebody else in here. Vince McCafferty. Your friends all have very funny names, don't they? McCafferty. Oh, yes, he's just along the corridor. I tried to go in and see him one day, but some fool of a nurse stopped me. Along this corridor? Well, thank you. Oh, no, where are you going? Oh, don't be so dreary. I like you. You're very understanding, and I need somebody understanding. Well, some other time, Amanda. I've got work to do. Oh, come back soon. I might be asleep, but you can wake me up. I shan't scream or anything. Thanks for your help. I haven't done a thing. Well, thanks anyway. And I don't object to the nighty. Not at all. Oh, good. Room 15, McCafferty V. Right, here goes. Mr. McCafferty? Vince? Uh, who is it? Who are you? D do I know you? I'm a friend of Nico's. Nico? Oh, yeah, the French kid. 
That's the start of it all. He started all this. Now, look, I don't want to talk to you. You just tell Nico. But he's been arrested. Oh. Oh, that's bad. Well, that's the end of it, then. Goodbye, Nico. But it's not the end. Before the police took him, we were looking for Buller. It won't be the end until Buller's in jail. I'm crazy. They'll never get Buller. Yes, they will. Because I'm going to find him. That's why I'm here. Look, Buller works here, doesn't he? Look, forget it, will you? Buller's dynamite. Just don't get involved. Look, he works here, but under another name. Is that it? What's his other name, Vince? I don't know. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Now, listen, matey, you better get out of here before it's too late. It's too late for me. I'll never shake him off now. But you've still got a chance. So just cut and run while you're still on two feet. What is it? Are you all right? <laughs> you damn fool. Of course I'm not all right. The doc won't want me not to talk too much. Now, what's going on here? Oh. Mr. McCafferty, I know very well you're not supposed to have visitors. Oh, uh, he, he came in. And he's going straight out again. I never heard of such a thing. Visiting hours were over long ago. Yes, but I must talk No to... arguments, please. Now, come along and don't keep me waiting. Goodbye, Vince. And good luck. That's absolutely disgraceful. They should never have let you in to see him in the first place. Well, they didn't. What do you mean? Well, I'm not exactly a visitor. I'm a patient, a new patient. Well, that's the first I've heard of it. Well, I only came in this evening. Well, you're not down on my list. That sheer inefficiency. What name is it, please? A name? Uh, my name? Oh, it's Benson Smith. Uh, Simon Benson Smith. You must have heard of me. No. But my father's the richest man in Europe. Well, congratulate him for me. Mr. Benson Smith, you may be a very important person for all I know, but there have to be rules, and rules have to be obeyed. And one rule is that by this time of night, you should be tucked up in your bed. What's the number of your room? Well, I can't seem to remember. Uh, that's the whole trouble, you see. I forget things so easily. Well, they must have given you a room. Well, I expect so, but I forget. And all your belongings? Surely you've got pyjamas, a dressing gown. Well, I'm sorry. It's all a blank. Well, I can't stand here arguing. I'm going to attend to poor Mr. McCafferty and try and settle him down to sleep. You'd better see the night porter. This is his office. Well, Mr. Drummond. Yes? I have a wee problem here. This gentleman, Mr. Benson Smith, mm -hmm. I found him wandering about, upsetting the other patients. Mm. I'm new here, you see, and I forget things. It says he was admitted this evening. I'll have to leave it to you to sort things out. I've got to get on my rounds. Uh, very well, nurse. I'll see what I can do. Now, sir, Benson Smith, did you say? Uh, yes, that's right. Oh, I've got the list of patients here. You don't seem to be on it. I've got no record of any new admissions today. And yet, here I am. Well, it's strange, isn't it? Very strange. You must have been seen by a doctor. Do you happen to remember his name? I'm not sure. It's all very hazy. Does the name Buller mean anything to you? There's no Buller here, sir. And if I may say so, you don't seem to have any noticeable symptoms of a breakdown. I'd describe you as a man in full possession of your faculties. Yes, well, perhaps I'd better come clean. I think it might be a good idea, sir. I'm looking for someone. In fact, two people. Hmm? A girl called Karen Engstrom and a man named Buller. I'm not exaggerating. I think it may be a matter of life and death. What makes you think you'll find them here? Well, Buller is on the staff. I'm certain of that. He's a doctor, but he goes under another name. And he's mixed up in a drug ring. I've got to find him. I see. I know it all sounds fantastic, but it's most... I wouldn't say that exactly. I've had my suspicions for some time that there was something fishy going on. Did you hear about what happened to our Mr. McCafferty? Yes, a mysterious overdose of drugs. There you are, you see, sir. Now, if your theory's right, well, that could explain a whole lot. Oh, no, I wouldn't call it fantastic at all. Thank heaven for that. I was afraid you'd throw me out of my ear. Oh, no, I won't throw you out. But what are you going to do, sir? Well, I've got to have time to make a search. If only I could stay here, mm -hmm. keep my eyes open and find out what's going on. We might be able to arrange that. Only you'll have to keep out of sight. If that night nurse spots you, then we'll have a lot of explaining to do. Well, don't worry. I'll lie low. Mm -hmm. Now, go along the passage until you come to room seven. Mm -hmm. Now, it's empty and you won't be disturbed. I'll bring you some pyjamas and we'll make it seem as if you're a patient. Right. Oh, and uh, I'll enter your name on the admission list in case the night nurse checks up. Now, what, what name did you say? I told her, Benson Smith. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but that's not your real name. Oh, no, my real name's Benson, without uh -huh. the Smith, and Neil Benson. I see. Well, all right, then. Now, you go to number seven. I'll be along in five minutes. Thanks. Benson. Benson.
Hello? Andrew, it's Bowler. We've had an unexpected stroke of luck. What do you mean? I think I've solved the last of our problems. Oh? I'll explain later. But I may be ready to leave here rather earlier than we planned. Good. The sooner the better. Now, the only thing is, there's a lot still to clear up. I think I shall need your help. Now, how's the girl? Any trouble? No. She's still lying there. Excellent. Then you carry out your side of the plan right away. Mm. Get a taxi, bring the luggage here, and be as quick as you can. Yes, all right. But the girl... Don't lose your head. <laughs> now, just carry on as we arranged. <laughs> And don't forget fingerprints, Andrew. Yes, but I... Oh, oh God. Oh, oh. That was hours ago. And since then... Nothing. Nico's arrested. Carr and Neil have both disappeared. And I'm on my own for the first time. I've got to decide what to do. You think Neil's got himself in a jam? Well, I won't let myself think that. And yet he knows I'm here. He must know I'm worried to death. Why doesn't he come back? Could be he's on the track of this guy, Buller. Oh, that's what I'm afraid of. He's no match for a professional criminal. If only Nico hadn't been caught by the police, he Wait might have been... That's the best thing that could have happened. Mrs. Benson, you and me, we need our heads examined. I don't understand. Why didn't you go to the police when all this first started? Because Nico was wanted... Oh, oh, I see. You've got it. Now the kid's been picked up, there's no reason to try and protect him anymore. Come on, the sooner we get onto Scotland Yard, the better. Of course. Who is it? Don't worry, sir. It's only me, the night porter. Oh. Now, I brought you some pyjamas. I suggest you get into bed and look as much like a patient as possible. What's the idea of all that stuff on the tray? Uh, a kidney basin, a hypodermic. It'll make it seem completely authentic. Yeah. Uh, right, sir, get yourself undressed. Well, it's certainly very lucky meeting you like this. I'd have been pretty well lost on my own. Oh, don't be silly, sir. I want to do all I can to help. Uh, do you think the uh, night nurse will look in here? Oh, she may and she may not. If she does, we've got our explanation already. I've, uh, I've put you on the admission list, so she'll be quite satisfied. Now, here's some pyjamas. Oh, thanks. Later on, I want to get up and start prowling around. Yes? When will be the safest time for that? Does she go off for a cup of cocoa or anything? Oh, you leave it to me, sir. I'll let you know when the coast's clear. Now, you'd better slip into bed. Right. I thought I heard voices. Oh, so there you are. I was just making sure Mr Benson Smith was settling down for the night. Oh, you found him on the list, did you? Well, nobody told me. That's the trouble with this place. Complete lack of organisation. Now, Mr Benson Smith, into bed, please. Yes, nurse. And I don't want to hear another word out of you. <laughs> don't worry, nurse. You won't. And why are you still hanging about, Mr Drummond? Oh, I'll just collect up these clothes and put them away. Very well. Oh, and your phone's been ringing its head off for the past five minutes, and I'm sure I haven't got time to take messages. Good night. Your phone? Yes, sir. Well, wait a minute. When the switchboard closes down for the night... It's my job to answer it. As night porter. So anybody ringing up would... Drummond. Yes, Mr Benson. Known since my student days <laughs> by the obvious nickname. Bulldog Drummond. Long since abbreviated to Buller. I'm getting out of here. No, you don't. <laughs> what are you... The hypodermic. Yes, already prepared. Let go of me. Ah, now don't struggle. It's quite painless. Into the vein like... So. Oh, Told you not to struggle. Now relax. I'll get help. Nurse! Oh, she'll be back in the morning. You won't come to any mischief until then. So heavy. Yes. Heavy and tired. Very tired. Mm. Now don't fight against it, Mr Benson. Just lie back and sleep. Sleep? Yes, sleep. That's the way... Oh, it's you, Bella. Where the hell have you been? I've been covering our tracks, Andrew. Remember that boy Benson? Hmm? Well, he turned up here. No, what did you do? If he talks... By breakfast time tomorrow, he'll be past talking. <laughs> Accidental death, of course. Another mysterious overdose. You're insane. Insane? I've never felt more lucid in my entire life. Now, I've got to get all these files out of the way and you'll have to help the me. The taxi's waiting outside. He can go on waiting. Now, don't worry, Andrew. There's still time. Mr. Plessy! It's the boy's mother! He is here! 
dear. I'm afraid you can't come in. This is a private clinic. Oh, not... belt up, will you? I take it you must be bullets. It's all over. They're on to us. Quiet! No, they can't stop us. Maybe we can't stop you, but the police are outside, Buller, and they will. It's true. It's all true. I'll tell you everything. The girl. He made me kill the girl. I didn't want you. Get out of my way! Karen! Where is Karen? At Buller's flat. She's at Buller's flat. The police! It's the police! Neil? Neil, are you awake? Yes, I... Oh, my head. What hit me? An overdose of drugs. Luckily, we found you within 15 minutes. They said you'd wake up this morning with nothing worse than a hangover. Is there anything worse? But how did I get home? What happened? Apparently, Buller Drummond really was an ex-doctor. Only he'd been struck off the register years ago. He was working at the Red Cliff as night porter. Yes, one of his old colleagues trusted him with that. He didn't realise that with case histories and wealthy patients at his fingertips, Buller was able to run a very profitable business slipping drugs to certain patients during their cures. Yeah, dope smuggled in by Plessy and his foreign students. The police caught both men with enough evidence to convict them. Karen! Is she... Where is she? Is she all right? She's next door, sleeping off the after-effects of a lot of coal gas. Neil, come back. You mustn't disturb her. Oh, well. Karen, are you... Oh. Oh, good morning, Neil. I thought you were in jail. Oh, a charming welcome, I must say. When your police got onto Interpol, they found they dropped the charges against me. But why? The boy in Marseille did not die. He recovered in hospital and told what really attacked him. So I walked out, a free man. And that's why I'm here, to say goodbye to you and to Karen. I'm going home. You're leaving Karen? Of course. Yeah, but I thought you and Karen... You mean you're not... We are not, and we never have been. I'm sure it must be a great relief to you, Neil. And why should it matter to Neil, one way or the other? It matters, believe me. It matters very much. Forgive me for interrupting, but look what's just arrived. Aren't they gorgeous? What flowers? Or for Karen? Who's been sending you flowers? No, not for Karen, for me. With an invitation to dinner this evening from Mr Schumann. Well, he's a very charming man. A little hard to follow at first. But, you know, I really think I'm beginning to dig his scene. Mother, watch it. Watch what? You're beginning to speak the language. That was the final episode of Peter Ling's radio thriller with Derek Seaton as Neil, David Valor as Nico, Hilda Kreisman as Mrs. Benson, and Henry Stamper as Buller. Death Speaks Another Language was produced for the BBC by Ronald Mason.